comment on an items not on the agenda? Scott. I realize I have not done what I ought to do, which is uh, fill in the select board on the 2018 Historic Preservation Grant, um, which you did a lot of work on, uh -huh. and it paid off. Great. Um, so we, the, the, the uh, Historic Preservation Commission was really invented to try to get as much of Calus uh, designated a historic district as possible. And it doesn't mean you can't paint your house pink. It's just, it's, there are a lot of good things about being a historic district. Maple Corner was the first one, North Callis was the next one, and East Callis is now on the list, so we got a grant to hire a contractor to do all the legwork and paperwork to uh, apply for historic district status for East Callis. Great. Talking about national register. National. When well, yes. you say it's, it's on the list, but we're applying, what does that mean? The Nas uh, National Register of Historic Districts, Historic Places. What this does is it would put East Callis Village on that list. Right, along, with, along with Maple Corner. So we're, we're, Calis, we're not on the list yet. Not yet, we're working on getting on the yeah. list. There was a, there was a state uh, uh, nomination appointment to the, to the state list about 15 years ago. And so, and that's done a lot of the groundwork, made it easier for the new contractor. So anyway, we've hired the contractor. We're going to have a kickoff meeting sometime the last week of September, introduce the people of East Callis to the, the pluses and minuses of what we're, mm -hmm. what we're doing. It'll probably be a five o'clock meeting with food. That always helps. That, I think that'll get them out. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and, it, and then it's a lot of slow legwork and stuff for a year or so and eventually maybe two years from now we'll hear from National Park Service if we're the nomination went through. Oh, it goes through the National Park Service. I that, know that. That, and that's where the money comes from, too. Oh, wow. Hmm. So, cool. Well, good. My oversight in not bringing everybody up to me. I think I've mentioned it to the board. Good, yeah. Yep. Yep. Yes, and Denise did a lot of very valuable in-kind work by mailing out 2030 oh. <laughs> yeah, RSPs. Just, yeah, I was just looking at the minutes the other yesterday. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So and we got the guy we hoped we would get, Brian Knight um, from Tunbridge, an experienced youngish guy. Nice. Well, that's great work you guys are doing. Well, it's there's life after the town hall. <laughs> yes, there certainly <laughs> is. That was back to <laughs> back to what the Historic Preservation Commission was designed to do. Very good. And Karen Lane's been pretty involved Karen with this one, right? Just been awesome. Yes, yeah, great. Great. If somebody else to do some work. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody else have public comments not on the agenda? All right. Are there any additions or changes to the agenda? All right. <clears throat> Hearing none. Um, uh, we could take you first, Alfred, because we we have a memo from Santa that we're just gonna kind of review if you'd like. From Santa? Sandra. Sandra. Oh, Sandra. Sandra. Well, she I heard Santa too. Too early for Santa Claus. Well, There's no snow it's going to be 90 tomorrow, right? Uh, right. That's exactly what I thought she said, too. Oh, my. Okay. Clear up my vocabulary. All right. So, um, anyways. You Where do you want to start? Um, truck lease. Yep. So I'm assuming everybody got the information that Toby sent around. Yes, and it's in the public folder, in the folder. So where we left off was there was that, that whole issue with the motor, and then they found a new motor. I think it was an email. To put in the, it says, um, truck proposal right there. And there was some attachments. Yeah, that's what I was looking for. I think Katie put them in there, the attachments, right? Did those come through today? Yeah. Yeah. Here we go. Yeah, it's at the very bottom, with a Western Star. Yeah, the oh, western okay. is the very last. It's up way at the bottom for some reason. Okay, I mean, it's in alphabetically or something. There you go. 
Yeah. There we go. When we met last, there was this whole, the whole, you know, we kept talking about this motor and a used one and a new one and right. what the value of the truck would be and so on and so forth. Right. So, where are we at with the old truck? With the old truck, if, uh, if the motor's in it, um, it was running. It, the bus, it's right. been here. It's been in service for only a couple of days, but uh, it went back today because there, it keeps running the battery dead, so something's drawing it down. Um, they, sure. they told me, well, I don't want to bore you guys, but I went down there to pick it up last week, uh, maybe a week and a half ago, and started on our way back, quit beside the road. Oh, no. Twice. So I called them, the what do you want to do on the interstate? Oh my so I said, what do you want to do? They said, well, can you get it back here? So I nursed it back there, and it quit twice on the way back. So when it quits, it just shuts right off. It's yeah. the, the panel says stop engine, so you have to stop the engine. So you pull it over as quick as you can, shut it off, let it sit there for a minute, start it up, you can go another, another little bit. So brought it back to them. They did a bunch more stuff to it. Um, then last week they said, yeah, they got it fixed. So we went and got it again. And what was it? What was the problem? Uh, we're not sure yet. It's, it's a multiple problem. So it's, uh, just, it's just a problem truck. It's just a problem it's truck. And, and it, what, it's, what, it, what I think is going on is that the cooling system, it, the, it's got a fan that comes on and off. So when it gets up to a temperature, the fan comes on. And I think what's happening is it's not... It's not telling the ECM, which is the brain, that we're cooled now. So the brain thinks that the motor's still hot. So since then, I've told them, you need to put a different ECM in it. So they've agreed to that, and they're going to do that. They were doing that today. That's why it's back down there. So they were going to pull this ECM out of a different truck, put it in there. And you can do that? Sometimes they're... That's pro they're programmable. Okay. ECM right. is they programmable program. from one truck okay. to another. So, uh, so they were going to do that today, and then there was also the separate issue with the batteries going down, something drawing the batteries down. So, during the process of them trying to figure out the problem with it shutting down, International told them you have to change the ground wires that, that ground the battery. So they went and did that, and since then is when we've been having the, the problems with. With it starting. So it's got a brand new motor. But it still doesn't and it, work. And it ran for a while, but it's now it's not starting. So today I sent it back down there because it's got to be right. And I'm not going to pay them until it is. Where, right. where is there again, Alfie? Uh, J&B International. Oh, in Colchester? It's Colchester. Okay. Yeah. So are they saying this is related to the install of the motor or is this separate? In the it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It's, mm -hmm. it's on them. It is. This truck needs to run before they're getting their okay. Okay. I was Absolutely. wondering if they were trying to separate it and say, yeah. well, we're going to bill you for all this. No. There was some extras that, that was not included in the motor job. There was a starter, because they got it all, the motor all in it, and it turned out the starter was bad. From sitting. From setting, probably. Yeah. Got moisture in it and shorted yeah. it out. So, but that's that was only a $300 starter. I mean, I... Right. Yeah. Um, so... So I'm hoping to get the truck back tomorrow, and we'll see. I mean, I haven't, I've only gotten like one or two full days out of this truck since it's mm -hmm. coming back. So I don't want, I don't want to pay them until it's, until it's right. Right. And the plan was to use that until we get this leased truck here, right? right? right. Which use isn't going to be until... Use it sparingly. Right. Until so we get the new one. And the new one is? The new one, well, we won't have it in service until January. January, okay. The cabin chassis comes in November, mm -hmm. but then it's two months to get it put together. Now, we're on schedules for both both of those companies. Both and then the we're looking to the sell the, the truck with this new motor once everything is working. Right. We're going to sell we, it outright and not trade it, correct? Yes. Well, we've we've gotten an estimate from a wholesaler 
through J and B, mm-hmm. that will give us forty five thousand for it. If we get it to them before the new year. So we're gonna be a little bit of time without without that spare truck. Mm-hmm. There's just no getting around that. But we have the spare spare truck. Right. Right. Which is Which also is actually better than the <laughs> No. Yeah, but that's getting old too. I mean, that's a right. 2009, so that's three years older than this one. So it's right. it's showing it's the signs right. too. But it has been more reliable, yes, by far. Yeah. Um, so. So that's where we are with the old truck. And like I said, I'm gonna once I get it right, I'm gonna use it sparingly, and and hopefully we can get it through to. Right. Until the time we can get rid of it. Um, so with the new truck, we got you guys have seen all the quotes. Mm-hmm. Uh, brings the total to what is it, one ninety four, five hundred. So that's all the warranty. What's there now is all the warranty mm-hmm. options. Mm-hmm. And then we're into the three options for leasing, lease companies. Yeah. So me and Sandra did a little bit of figuring. Okay. And it turns out that the state bank is the better option. Um, 4.1. That's this one. <coughs> yeah, that state bank. Yeah. It's, it's not the best interest rate, but because it's the first payment would be due in, Jan- in uh, two months from now, two months from closing. Two months from closing? <laughs> Closing line. Right, wherever it's at. Uh, whenever, whenever you when you close, so the first payment is due January fifteenth. January fifteenth. But the interest is accumulating there in that two month time frame. Yeah. Right. And what was the? So it figures out that uh, the payment would be twenty seven seven ninety one for from them. Twenty seven. It's not on there. It's, oh, that's okay. some of the math that. That's the annual payment. Yes. Wait, is that? Are we looking at? We're looking at Bay Stone, not. State you bank. want to be looking at State Bank. But so it's but Bay Stone is called State Bank. Oh, it Bay is. Stone it is. Yeah, okay. Is. Okay. So so. So, Alfred, it's a it's better for us. Because I'm just saying it's a lesser payment. Okay. It says payment amount thirty one seven fifty five. Right. That's when you times payment. that you times that by seven years. Mm-hmm. So does that mean we're keeping the trucks for seven years instead of five? Uh, well that's what it's been all along is seven years. Right. I know Greg recommends five. But so, we are making sure we get a seven year seven year warranty. warranty. Right. Which so, with so that, it, all that said, I am not in favor of I would I would rather have a five year lease than to have a seven year lease. Mm-hmm. Because at the end of seven years you have no truck. I mean the truck is beat up, it's the, your value's gone. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yes, that's gonna make you a bigger payment, but you're gonna be able to get rid of that truck with more more refund. Can we go back to why the seven? Why this one is better? Is it because you said it's? Is it because if I'm piecing together what I heard, we make the first payment earlier, so you're paying interest on less principal. Is yes. That's what it is. I believe that's what it is. Okay. And what was the? What were the other options? Can we scroll? Let's go up to the first back one. Through. And this community was community leasing. leasing. Payment thirty-two. Interest three point eight. Yeah. The next okay, spe- what's so I see spe- what she did. She, she took their their monthly payment. Yeah. Times it by seven. 
was it seven years yeah. yeah and then the difference between the the purchase price and that figure that she come up with that's how it's a better deal to go with the the state bank so if you if you take MLC mm -hmm. and you take their their monthly or yearly payment mm -hmm. times it by seven you get two hundred and twenty seven thousand four twenty six then you minus the the asking price mm -hmm. you get thirty two nine twenty six so what she's doing is figuring out what we're paying for this lease mm -hmm. and the middle one is the best one this the state bank and I think it's because of the because of the term, the way the terms of, of of each lease. Yeah. And this is the state bank. This right? is the state bank. Yeah. yeah. But it seems to be you could you could pay it early. Can well I don't know if the terms of the lease would allow you to do that. That's a good question though. Yeah, I mean it seems to me we could align that mm -hmm. and go for the lower interest. The lower mm -hmm. interest is obviously the best value if, if all, of, all other right, components are the same. So if you take well, that concept of making starting your payments earlier and apply it to the lowest interest, then yeah. in theory, if you take the best elements of all of the ideas, then... Because there's no reason why we couldn't make a payment in Assuming there's no reason, we right? Can't. Right, in September, or October, right? Well, no. I no, because the, we won't no, have the truck the yet. The term of the lease dictates when your payment's going to be. So all of these three leases that we have have a different payment due date. Right, and we and you don't want to make a payment and on something decided, until you have it. We won't have that's it. That's decided January. at the time. Now Sandra was saying that January would be a better time to have a payment come due because all of the rest of the payments are are around June, July. Oh, for the other equipment? The year. Mm -hmm. For the other other payments, the other mm -hmm. equipment payments that we have. So she was in favor of having the payment mm -hmm. in January. And also given the fact that it's a that it's a lesser lesser amount. Yeah. Do we do we think it's a big deal? Does anybody know? Is it a big deal to go back to somebody who says, well we're gonna time your payment in June. Or is there a penalty for early payment, or is well there might be, but the, but we haven't agreed to anything yet, right, so no. we could go back right. and well, say. Well, certainly we can we can go back and ask. We really like questions. your interest rate, and, and also and I'll just say that Toby's the one that researched this, so I he handed it to me this morning, and I'm trying to re right. represent yeah, it yeah, the yeah. best yeah. that I can. For right. Yeah. I didn't ask him these questions. To... He won't be here tonight. No. Um, so. And just in the here? short time that I had, I had got this this morning. I worked all day. I came in here yeah. and gave it to Sandra, and he, she, and I sat here for five minutes, and she <laughs> did the math here. And so this is what I've got. Al, great. Do we have to? So, you're don't beat yourself up. No, you're a total disadvantage. Well, no. You're the only guy, and the people with all the answers aren't here. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. I'm so that, that way most what, of the time. That's why you're getting all the questions. Yeah. Do you know if we um, when we have to sign this by? Uh. Only in time so that we can buy the truck. The truck comes in November, so okay, we have so to have our time. we have to have our financial mm -hmm. institute in place before November. So I wonder what it would be to do it for five years. Yeah, that would be something to research. So, so maybe right. we could put in the minutes. Katie's getting mm -hmm. this all in the minutes. So when right. so Cliff and I meet with Sant with the staff on Wednesday morning, we can ask them to do some further research. Well, and if it's right. a five-year term instead of a seven, probably. Maybe the interest rates. Normally, you could get a lower rate. Right. Right. So I think there's there's still time to do some investigation. Yeah. I think we should and find right. out about early payments or early payoff, five years. You know, some of those kinds of questions well, we I can think ask. As far as the early payment payoff, I mean, it's a it's a lease, so it's mm -hmm. they're planning on that going the full term. Right. No, I mean, you know what I mean? It's, it's not like buying a car outright. You can go buy a car outright and get away with the interest. This right. is a lease. They're expecting you to pay that lease every year. That's I how see. they make their money. Okay. It's not like buying a car. Mm -hmm. at the, you know what I mean? Going to the bank, mm -hmm. getting a loan, mm -hmm. 
you run into right. money, yes. you can pay it off. You don't have to pay that interest. This is this is a lease. You're signing a contract. Right. Right. Well, uh, the opportunity then is that we have two or three quotes, and so there's a market, and there's the opportunity to go back and. Yeah. So I think what we can do is on Wednesday when we meet, um, we can do some further investigation, check out the five year what the five year option would be. Right. And then we can talk about it at the next select board meeting again. So then, because I don't think we have all, I don't think we have all of those quotes. Yeah, you should have. Yeah, this is all in the that document. Is it all Community in here? Okay. Leasing, State Bank, mm -hmm. and MLC. Well, somehow I don't. Have no, it's not in that one. It's in the one that came from. You're in the same document. It came in the two documents. Yeah. Oh, maybe it was totally. That's why I don't yeah. have it. But it is in the folder. Yeah, so we can look at it there on Wednesday mm -hmm. with Sandra. And you're welcome to join us if you want, but I mean. And you can let Toby know he's welcome to join us too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. So what day are you going to do that? We'll do it Wednesday after we have the town hall meeting. We'll be doing the staff. Okay. We'll meet with the staff. So it would usually be around 9. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. 9, 9, 15, something like that. Yeah. Um, so, with something sort of related to this, um, for that first payment, where are we, how are we going to come up with the money for that? I mean, eventually we're going to have to talk about this. So, yeah, um, was talking to Sandra a little bit today, and she said, um, unaudited number in our equipment fund mm -hmm. is like $34,000. So that's enough for for okay. our first payment. First payment, but we'll have to budget it going forward. We'll have to budget it. Yes, right. Okay. But because it's a lease, you really just need to get over that first payment. Right. And then you can budget the rest. Right. So where I'm going with this is that if we take that money out of there, when we sell the truck outright, because none of these figures have the have the, right. the trade money involved. Right. Mm -hmm. So we take that trade money, which is is hopefully going to be around forty five thousand, and we refund that that equipment fund with that. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, and that's actually, what I would suggest. Right. So I just wanted to get that out. That's sort of what I would like to see happen. Yeah. No, yeah, that makes, makes sense. sense. That makes sense to me. I don't know what else you'd do. Right. Well, I, what you don't, you just don't want it to go into like a general fund surplus or something is what you're getting at, right? That it should go back right. into the equipment fund. Right. right. But I mean, right. we've got, we've got that much money in there, so we could sign this lease tomorrow, and have have our first payment covered. Right. But we're not going to. But we right. No, I got. I do, right. We got more right. research to do. But I'm just right. saying, that money's there right now. We could we could sign our, our first payment right. right away. And by the time we then get ready to make a payment, the audited figures will be back. And we'll know correct. exactly how much. Mm -hmm. I think it's all, I think it'll all work out fine. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and we do have time. I mean, it's not like it's, it's, it's going to happen right That's away. That's unusual, right? <laughs> well, yes, but we still need to keep it on the burner because right. I don't want the truck to come and then we're still wondering what we're going to do. Right. For well, we'll talk about it Wednesday and then we can put it on the next select board agenda. Yeah. Which would be September 10th, I guess it is, right? Yes. Okay. Okay. All right. Sound like a plan? So I'll have more information. We'll all have more information by then. Right. About yep. this. Yep. Okay, good. Um, so I think that's all I've got as far as the truck stuff goes. Okay. Uh, normal activities is we're working on Jack Hill. I see that. Um, yeah. Quite an impressive poll there. Colbert Sim. Colbert Sim Place, yeah. Um, and they told me they were going to be ready for regular gravel, which is my part, mm -hmm. tomorrow, but that's not happening. <laughs> I just, I'm sorry, I've done enough of these, I know it's not going to happen tomorrow. Right. But, um, but is but it a specific won't be sure. gravel type? Well, the town's responsible for the top coat, mm -hmm. um, and he's only going to bring it up to a foot above the culvert. That was mm -hmm. what was in the contract. Okay. So yep. once he's done that part, then we'll bring our gravel in mm -hmm. and sort of finish it up. But he's not to that stage. I can, I can yeah. See that. But well, by the end the, of this week, we should be having it 
open. open. Oh, really? Okay. I didn't know how yep. long it was going to take. It looked pretty impressive. Yeah. When I drove by it a couple times over the weekend and stuff, it's like, whoa. Yeah. Yeah. So where'd the old stone go that was there? The old stone is sitting in behind the town garage right now. It was delivered there by gravel construction. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, it was all part of the contract. Cool. Um, nice. And I will use that for headers around culverts because with this new permit that we would have to follow. The municipal every, roads general permit. Yeah, did every you see culvert. Where, yeah, did you see where we got ours? Every culvert requires a header. Header, yeah. yeah. We got so. our um, municipal roads general permit issued today. I sent it to oh. you and Toby and Sandra and Judy. Oh, I don't know if anybody been, else wants to see it, but it's been after uh, yeah, it's yes. been throwing yeah. a file with Katie. That'd be great. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's that, and then we we just been working our excavator on changing some culverts. We did the and grant the, the grant project all. on Loose Road. It's all done. That's ready for submittal. We've been working a lot with this young fellow back here on the town hall. Pretty impressive pictures. It's awesome. Yeah, yeah. I haven't yeah. seen the photos yet. You sent them around, didn't you? I saw. Them yeah, or, or, yeah. I think I sent them around. Very Donna. great. Very yeah. great. Very it's impressive. Nice. I saw this last week. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, I saw this photo. You Alfred built, in on the uh, yeah. under the building box. You built some window boxes or something. I have not done that yet. What I have done is I've bought liners, like window box liners. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they'll just I'll build the box so they'll just set in there, and then spring and fall or whatever if they want somebody wants to take them out to maintain mm -hmm. the flowers. Yeah, we're not it's maintaining easy, the flowers. Just, no, right. <laughs> but I figured that would be easier mm -hmm. rather than having a wooden box that nobody can lift or right. or you can't carry. Right, can't take it off. Right. Because no, I was struggling with trying to make a way, find a way that I could that could they could be taken off easily mm -hmm. and without building a, a, wood, a steel bracket or something. So I just bought these liners that'll set down in, and then they can take them out uh, whenever they want to. They can plant whenever they want. Okay. So who's Bobcat? Was that? Was that? That's Alfie's general contracting Bobcat. Oh, he donated yeah. equipment. It's not really, but. It's <laughs> well, we were sort of. We had to find a way to get gravel inside underneath the building. Um, so that was the best option. Yeah. I know that, I know you guys are really busy, this is not beating up on you, but um, we did say a couple of weeks on the boxes when we were out there, Right. so it might be worth at least. Yeah, no, like, it's going to happen. I'll, no, I know it's, it's going to happen, I'll I'll do, but just that. for somebody, it doesn't have to be you, you can touch base and say we haven't forgotten. Thank I did long. that. You did that. Okay. I did I, talk to Reed right. today also. You did? Okay, because I talked to, okay, so they're not sitting around when you were there. Right, I talked to Reed and I talked to Chris like a week or more ago. Yeah. To let them know that you hadn't forgotten. Yeah. Yeah. No. That you didn't been busy with the town hall and stuff like that. They were fine. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Um, the only other thing I had was um, at one of our town hall meetings, somebody asked about, do we have any kind of signage you can put on Kent Hill that's like shows the curve or slow down or something like that? Do you have any signage like that that we could put up or that we could get? Well, they they have placards. Which is, which says which is a, it's an arrow. You know, we put, I don't know which curve they're talking about, but we you have know, put some up Don? there. Yeah, Don was, was there. It was a neighbor who wants to see the road. It has nothing to do with the town hall project. Right. He just wants to see Kent Hill Road have some caution slow signs or something, or I don't know. He wants to, he wants some kind of S curve or, or whatever. Oh, traffic. He's looking to slow the traffic down a little bit. To slow the traffic down. Uh, I don't think the signs will actually. Well, I, I mean, but it doesn't hurt to have them. But, but that's, that's what the whole conversation about the permanent traffic. Right. We thought, originally we thought he was just talking about while well, the town hall work was going on, but that's not what he meant. He was talking just in general. So I don't know if you have some signage you could put up or get more mm -hmm. or some. Well, I mean, we've got arrows. I'm, I'm just trying to figure out where mm -hmm. the problem spot is. Because in front of this house? Is this, is this uh, David Sheets by chance? No. no. It's not. It's not as no. close to this end. Okay, gotcha. Um, so it's not, it's not, if it's that house, it's not a curve. I don't know what to buy. We could do a slow, I don't, we don't have a lot of, there's not. But we could ask him when he can be at the next town hall meeting, we can ask him. Because I wasn't clear Is this either. Ernie Parish? No. It's not Ernie. No. No. Ed? No, Chris Cole. 
Chris Colt. Chris Colt. Who he lives in Maple Corner. Corner for it. Chris Colt. Um, Wrong end of the road. I'm confused. I need to know who it is so I can. I he walks off to him and he get walks Ken. Huh? I just told you. Okay. Chris Colt. Okay, but I don't know Chris Colt. I don't know that name. Oh, okay. Or where he's he in a blue barn house there. He's the one who did in the, the back apartment. The back condo. Right in Maple Corner. He's in Maple Corner. He's not on Ken. But he's concerned when he's so driving down. So is there a down. chance that we can get him to call me directly so I can get his concern? Because yeah. I, I mean, I, I'm yeah. guessing here. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. No, I can have him call you, or he'll be here probably for the town hall meeting, and you're coming around nine anyway. So I can just ask him to stay. Yeah. I'll talk to you directly. Okay. I didn't think I didn't think it was like this big deal, so that's why I'm saying. I'm yeah. Well, no, it's not a big deal. I just I just need to know what he's looking for. Yeah, I wasn't real clear what he was looking for either. I thought he was looking for like those signs that show the S curve. Thing. That's what I had written down in my notes, but maybe that's not what we're talking about. As I understood it, he just kind of would like to see some mechanism that might encourage people to slow down, especially closer to the town hall, but overall the road itself, it is a major artery, artery and there's a lot of people who aren't even obeying the speed limit signs. So right. he's just wondering if there's any visual cues we could put up maybe by the curves or in vicinity of the town hall, the caution or the wavy lines, something right. like this. Well, that's yeah. just what I was saying. In the corners up there, we do have the little triangles, the little triangles yeah. that tell yeah. people that are coming up. I mean, I always call those Donna's triangles. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. Um, so if that's not enough, we can look into other things. I, right. I just don't. I need to know where the problem area is that he's yeah. referring to. Well, then, to, when, if you're going to come for around nine o'clock, anyways, maybe he could just take a ride up with you quickly. Sure. Okay. Yeah. All right. Sounds good. And then tomorrow is this road erosion class four class erosion. four road erosion thing at the town garage from oh, ten to ten tomorrow. to noon. And what's I mean, what's this thing about? They're going to have his first student. Bus people up there? Is that for real? I haven't heard nothing about that. That was something I read on the announcement. I was like, really? They're going to bus people <laughs> to Apple? Oh, Hill? maybe. Oh. Must yeah. be they're going to have a, a, a localized meeting area and then there's a lot. Yeah, I thought I brought it. With I heard like there's 50 people coming. Really? Where yes. are we going to fit 50 people? We don't, I don't think we got 50 chairs. People don't have, have to stand. stand. I guess, right? Right. Um, Got a bay open? Like yeah, the trucks I guess, will be out. Yeah, the trucks will be. I can move all the trucks. We still have the floor. It's clean. But 50 people is like. That's a lot. It's a hot day. <laughs> yeah. That, uh, when did they let you know about this? Because the first I heard about it was on this the CBRPC weekly roundup. Right. Right, and that's where I heard about it. And oh, you didn't I, know about it I heard before? About, when I heard about it, I thought it was just going to be a site visit to go look at our project on, on Apple right. Hill. But now, as it's clearer, it's, it's, we're going to be an hour at our shop to discuss it, mm -hmm. and then we're going to Apple Hill to look at the Well, they didn't let you know ahead job. of time, because what if you guys weren't? I think it was something that Toby might have set up. And as we all know, we don't get all the details from Toby. So, I am I am ready. I mean, the shop you, is clean. Do you have this? Are, do you want this? Uh, is that that's just the yeah. the agenda for? Yeah. If I can print it off again, or they'll probably have them tomorrow. Yeah. No, I didn't get this. Well, you can have that. That's what I printed off. And then something I read that came with that talked about the um, first student. Busing people to this site visit. I'm thinking up at the hill. I don't think so. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Unless they have one of those little van things. They'll have, well, they called me up. Dan Courier called me up and asked me if I could close the road down. And this was right after I got chewed on about Apple or Jack Hill being closed oh. and not notifying people. So I'm like, Dan, no, I'm not closing the road. We can put signs up. We mm -hmm. can put cones in the road to warn people that we're going to be standing in the road, but mm -hmm. not closing it. Right. Especially for an hour. We're only going to be there for an hour. So I told them, no, I'm not closing the road. Yeah. So I've got these regular official flagger symbol signs mm -hmm. that we'll put up yeah. and to let people know that we're in the road. 
Okay. And, um, Sounds good. And that should be sufficient. Okay. So, are we all coming to uh, see our work out there? I have to work. <laughs> I'm coming tomorrow. I have to work that. Yeah. I mean, I've looked at it already. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, all right. I so, think it'll be interesting to yeah. see what everybody thinks of it. Yeah. But I think it looks great. Project. All right. Okay. I guess that's it. Unless you have anything else. I'm um, just wondering how are we coming with Paul and the evaluations and all that? Well, I've had computer glitches. I started to create it in Excel and found out that wasn't going to work, so I'm transferring it to a Word document, trying to make it so you can just check off yeah. boxes. So I'm about halfway through, and we're supposed to be meeting on Monday, right at the town garage on the 3rd, September 3rd. Are you guys, is that? That's a uh, holiday. All right, so maybe we can do it. Well, that's a select board day. That's not oh, yeah. 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 Maybe yeah. we can do it on maybe the. Can we do it on the? Right. Are you available on the fifth? Maybe you and our and I can meet on the fifth after the town hall meeting. Is that Wednesday? Yeah. Yeah, I can make that work. Okay, let's do it on the fifth, and we'll review it, and then hopefully this is it for us. you can just we can just print it off, and you can check boxes. Right. Our punishment for missing the meeting. I know. A ton of them, right? Yeah, there's like 20 in there. Not... Yeah, it takes a while for me to review all those. Yeah. Well, thank you for doing it. Um, um, is that it? I, unless you wanted to try and do it, because you're going to be here Wednesday. I'm not going to be ready by Wednesday. Not going to have it ready? Okay. Right. So if we could do it the following Wednesday, that would be better for me. Okay. 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 Yeah. So the road name sign, you want me to stick around for that? Oh, you can. Yeah. So Let's do. I mean, we're gonna have to take. We're gonna take stuff out of order just because you're here, John's here, Ben's here. So let's talk about. Ben is sitting right behind you. Um. So Ben requested the, the naming of the road as. Reed Wood Road. Okay. And I've checked, and there's really there's no big thing about how you're supposed to go about doing this. Um, you've talked to Ann Winchester about the 911 issues. You're all set with that. Yeah. Um, and what we have done in the past is because we want to have our signs all uniform and the up to E911 standards is we would buy like the first sign. If they get stolen, we get another. Right. If next if they get stolen, I guess then it's on you. Okay for the grease on the sign pole. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any comment, Alfred, on the the road? It's a private road, so it won't be maintained by the town. Right. Right. Um, is it just one? House. There's one on there. Yeah, there's a camp and I'm building one house now. And the plan is to build a second one for a second house and a third building. And Joanne suggested so I don't have to change my address in a few years to just do it now. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that makes sense. Because then all the nine one E nine one one stuff is already all taken care of. Yeah. And would the town install the sign? For Okay. Only because, you know, in a sign in the right of way is town's liability. Right. So it needs to be, you know, you have to use an anchor and it has to be the proper post and it's just. Right. Okay. It's just easier to do it. Where's the sign going to be placed? Uh, typically on the right hand side, um, inside the right. Um. Just so you know, that our drive is probably going to shrink a little bit. We put down the initial fill, but we're going to shrink the drive a little bit, and it's going to shrink before it's left in the side. So okay. I don't know what it's going to be placed, but... <coughs> so, what's the name? Reed, 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 Reed Wood. Yeah. I can write it down for you. So if you want it, when you yeah. look at the sign. Yeah, well, I'm just thinking of the length of the sign. Because <laughs> the longer the name, the longer the sign has to be. So. Right. Like, Bain Camoli is really long. Right. 
So any, any so sign that's over four feet, feet long road. has to have a double post. And so this would have 10 letters. Read wood road, 10 letters. Because you don't have to spell out road, right? And then you got to put private PVT. Oh, PVT. Yep. Private. So it's going to be two signs, or two sign posts. It okay. will be. Read wood RD. And then, but you have to put in parentheses that, or not private parentheses, PVT. but like you have to put PVT. Uh, that adds. I'm just saying, anything over four foot long has to yeah. have two posts. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that sounds like so how many letters get us to four feet? Uh, I'm not sure. I've never counted them, but there. <laughs> you would consider just naming it Reed Road, or yeah. Wood Road. Yeah. I don't know what the. I can bring it up to the family. Re or wood or wood is the family name that we got the inheritance to buy the property with. Uh, oh, I thought it had something to do with like firewood. It, we've also been using it as a wood lot, but the wood is the last name of the person. That I see, I it. see. Okay, I get it. It has a so sentimental va good. value. Yeah. Okay. Do you need to go, do you need to meet Ben out there and look at it at all, or? Uh, no, I mean, I just, with two signposts, it takes up more space. Mm -hmm. So we may have to cut some brush or something, some trees to get it. Right. Yeah. To and get I don't it. think it'd be close enough for my, as long as you put it outside where the driveway is now. Right. And then right. Alfred can let you know when he's going to install it. Yeah. Is Doug's, does Doug's have two posts then? Yeah. It does? Okay. Yeah. Doug Lily Road, yeah. Because it has to have the PVT too. Yeah. Doug Lily Drive. Doug Lily Drive. <laughs> it couldn't be road. He needed, road. To get, he needed to have another letter. Okay. All right. Do you. So should I order that right away? Yeah, might as well get it going. I don't know that we have to do any kind of official motions or anything. We did yeah. the ducks. We did the ducks. All right. Then I would make a motion to approve the name of Reedwood Road PDT. I second that emotion. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And Alfred will work with you on letting you know just out of a courtesy when it's going to be installed and you understand you may have to cut some stuff too. Yeah install it and it'll be a double post and like I said the town will pay for the first one and hopefully it won't get stolen like the lightning ridge road sign is there any news on getting that one replaced oh, baby. it looks like it doesn't get stolen when it's spelled wrong right <laughs> <laughs> exactly it's been there the longest when it's spelled wrong yeah. so. <laughs> pass it around Maybe thank, you. thank you thanks thank you. Take care. thanks Al. Right. see you thank Wednesday you. Okay. thank you all right Salsa and chips here, guys. Yeah. Can I ask a question about the, the whole no, road thing? Because mm -hmm. you. you sent out the 911 stuff. Um, and maybe it's been, it's unusual. We've had two of these in just about as many months. Oh gosh. But it is you, unusual. Yeah. So maybe mm -hmm. it's not a big thing. But um, put an addressing maintenance system in place. We don't, this is it, right? This is our system. Right, we use this, the, the state system, right, John? Exactly. The state the state's system, we input the information into their system, right? For 911. Well, it says that you, that you, just kind of this process, like what is the process for addressing? Well, oh, the, it's easy. There's, there's just a, there's a, a map. single form, yeah. and you can add a new road, and you just give it its new name, and you get it arranged. So the, the first house, the first structure in the last house. Those addresses establish a range, and that's it. Give it to you, 911. It's not that answer that. No, it does answer my question. But, you know, if this keeps happening, eventually we might want to have a policy that says, you know, you come to the select board with your, your name ID and you work to the 911 coordinator. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of what's, what's that's been, what has, what's what what's is been happening, right? Yeah. Because the select board has to approve the, the road name. I don't know how often they'll change, but maybe helpful for the coordinator too, because Anne was new and didn't know what the process was. Right. Yeah. She's brand new. Yeah. Right. This is the first one since Anne's been on, because when we did Doug's, yeah. Anne wasn't the coordinator. And when we did the one on off of Route 14, I think you were still coordinating then. And Black Road. Yeah. 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 Well, that was this year too. Yeah. Yeah. So we've had three, three. When it's usually we don't have any. If we had a, it would be like a one-page policy that at least go on the website and says, okay. Tracy, you wonder if this is how it works. You're gonna, are you gonna yeah, I'll write that? Yep. Okay. I said, great. Who is Ann? 
down with Ann and John. And, or just draft it and then send it to Ann and John to look at it. I don't even know what to write, but I can talk to people about what to write. Yeah. You would have to start with me talking to somebody to tell me what to write. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I think it's pretty, pretty, and pretty easy policy. Yeah. Plagiarism is encouraged. Oh, there you go. Right. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't know, maybe some other towns like East Montpelier or Berlin might have something on their website. That's where I would look. Oh, first. that's a good idea. Yeah. I would do that first. But I could call, what's his name? Bruce. 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 Mm -hmm. All right. Um, so I guess we're done. Thank you, Ben. Thank you. So ben, Thank you. Great. Maybe when I call Judy, she sent out an email. He's in Pennsylvania. Yeah, oh. I answered the email today. Oh, oh, you got it. Okay. When I tried to return one, it was the wrong. His address was the wrong. Yeah, she had a typo in the address. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, Ben. Thank you, Ben. See ya. More on that later. Okay, okay John, you want to give us an update? Yeah. Forget. Uh, forget what was happening last time I was here. Um, I don't think the town hall had been lifted yet. Okay. Okay, we're pretty much starting from scratch. Yeah. <laughs> um, maybe some of the demo had been done, or at least was in progress. The demo is finished. The demolition contractors did a great job. Um, and, uh, Alfred and the crew came in, did all this. Oh, well, Gettys from New Hampshire came, lift, lifted the building up, uh, moved it. And we're moving it four feet back, four feet towards Maple Corner. You can't even tell. I mean, the building's so big, four feet. You, you no, you can't even tell. Um, and then Alfred and the crew came in and did the site prep. They dug for the new footings. Uh, the engineer called for a base of eight inches of crushed stone on which the footing was poured. Alfred installed that. Um, we went and asked. Uh, Three concrete contractors, Hutch, uh, uh, Haskins, and Perry out of Hardwick. Harry, Perry's the only one who responded. Not only did they respond, but they could fit it in the schedule and start within five days. And they were uh, they were thirty thousand, twenty-eight thousand nine hundred, and I think we had budgeted almost forty thousand. So we've been under budget uh, quite a, uh, quite a few things. things so far. It's been amazing, and uh, and everybody's really impressed with the quality of work. It looks great around the site. Um, tomorrow the installation is coming, and I'll be working with I don't know Toby or maybe maybe Alfred and his crew. We'll put the installation around the inside, then start putting some of the stone back against it. Um, Green Line Builders is going to come in and the studs, the existing studs, the, the exterior walls of the lower level are just hanging like a curtain from the perimeter sill beam. They've got to cut those uh, and then they're going to put a two by plate under those and screw it up into the studs so the walls are kind of straight. They're also going to put the sill down on top of the concrete. When that's done, when, and when, even when we, when we have a good idea when Ernie's Green Line Builder is going to be done, we're going to call Daddy's and uh, and that's where we are right now. Um, so they're gonna have to sister some of the studs and cut them with the ones that are rotted, or are they all? I, actually, the rot's bad in the front corner where the floor is rotted, but it looks like we have to take three and three quarters of an inch off the studs, and that could get us past the worst rot in that corner. And then for the rest of the studs, and there's there. there studs and then they're periodically interrupted with a six by eight um, you know, in line with the beam frame. Um, the, all of them get cut to the same length. It's going to be interesting yeah. because the building was not raised level. It was just raised and it's whatever out of whack. Oh. It was, it was right. mm -hmm. Well, no, that's, this is what gets said. The leveling occurs when they put it back yeah, down. on the, yeah. the foundation. Well, and then John and those guys went over there and did some stuff with the windows upstairs it's so solid. that they wouldn't Yeah, we want to keep the building tweaks a bit. We're not putting stress on the corner of one of those big sashes and have the whole thing go south. Um, we, the town is continuing to act as its own general contractor for the electrical so far, for the plumbing so far. Um, the next time I come for the select board, we'll be talking about the person, the company, whoever, the entity that will take over the project finally, and and it won't be this whole right. renovation committee making decisions. There'll, there'll be a larger bid 
that'll take care of all the carpentry, the roofing, mm -hmm. the insulation. Um, it's left to be seen if that scope includes the electric or plumbing. The town may continue to work as a center general contractor, which is fine, but it's a limited thing. You don't mind if, I mean, you've been, you and no, no, it would, it would the be committee fine. have and, all been doing that, the TC committee. And there's no way that we're going to become uninvolved as soon as they get someone else in. Right, no, because so, there's too many questions. Yeah. And so so it's, it's going really well. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the, the, the project, the Memorial Hall people are, are very envious right uh, how, how well this whole thing's going it's uh, just it's like it was you know what it just it seems like it was meant to be because stuff is just kind of falling in place we have a really good committee of people with really great ideas you know the whole hyper local approach thing and then maybe you all should form a consulting firm and yeah do this bit on the moral home. Oh, there you go. <laughs> and now that, that time will come for that too yeah but anyway so that's that's the status um Green line will come and trim the bottom of the studs and get the, all that prep done for the building to go back down. But they've got a job they're working on, and when they get rained out, is there it's roofing the skylights and stuff. So on a rainy day, when they can't do that, they'll come here. And so what we're shooting for is something like in 10 days' time, they'll be done with that. And so the building could be back down on the ground in two weeks. Um, for what it's worth, we got one of the grants, well, the, the only grants we've gotten so far. Uh, takes care of accessibility, and so right. there are elements of the project that are accessibility related. Things like the the plumbing under the slab that goes to the accessible bathroom that was something that's uh, an accessible cost. But we can't we can't take any of the grant money for expenses that we run up until after September first. Right. So, so we, we have one invoice we had to pay. Yeah, we've been paying some, but, right. but as long as we can show them thirty thousand dollars worth of billing accessibility related that occurred after September 1st and we'll get all the money that they said we get. And uh, so that kind of determined the schedule and we're, we're on that schedule. Yep. Looks like the first And then is it, is it, what's his name, Bob? Weber. Bob Weber, Weber. accessibility right. systems. Yeah, he's all set. The, right, uh, we gave him a little down payment just to get him started and then everything else he agreed to bill after September 1st when we have the grant money Right, again. exactly. And, uh, and the, the underslab prep, the plumbing and stuff, that'll all happen after September 1st. Yeah. We're doing good. Yeah. So as long as John's here, do you want to jump down to the item? I should have put it closer to the top about um, approving a hiring of John as the architectural consultant and the fee. It, the, how this whole thing got started was um, when John graciously agreed to do a lot of the architectural stuff was that we got bids back for architects that were anywhere from what was it, forty to eighty thousand dollars, Scott? The, the guy that had done most of the work and didn't have to do much work for himself was about forty-eight. The high one was eighty-seven. Right. So dollars. That I mean, that kind of started the whole hyper local yeah. thing um, that Scott. Well, first you got hyper over that. Right. And then it became local. <laughs> right. And that's when John agreed and, you know, we, we said right along, we want to make sure we pay you something. And I think that your fee of $20,000 for this whole thing, including all the general contracting stuff that you've done, all the labor that you've done already. Manual labor. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he's, you've done a ton of already manual labor. You're, he's like on call 24-7 if somebody wants to go there and look at the electrical or whatever. He drops everything and goes there. And he's also lost other clients as a result of town hall project. This a little better on my resume. <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, um, it's working really well. It's working out really well. It is. It's Just going the, great. The, the, the so price that, you charge on your So resume. officially for the record, we should probably have it in the minutes that the select board voted to, to have you officially hired as the architectural consultant and and you said 20,000, right? Yeah, that's max. And we've already, that's and that's max. max. Yeah. So like I said, we're getting a really good deal. That's another item that came in way, way under budget. So moved. Second. Okay, are there any further discussion or questions? Also salsa done? No, I'm good. Okay. That's pretty good. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Good decision, you guys. Gentlemen. <laughs> Thank Again, you so much. More, you know, this is gold, but right, but he's, he's lost too much weight. <laughs> <laughs>
Now, the John, next, thank uh, you so much. Next month is going to be pretty cool. Yeah, you can see some of the carpentry started. Yeah. The slab will be in, so you should be able to walk in, walk this around on yeah. that <laughs> cloud. <laughs> Okay. It looks cool. I came down Kent Hill Road. I was like, oh, oh my God, okay. that is so cool to see. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Just <laughs> Jerome, it's wonderful. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thanks, Good guys. night. See you, Scott. See you Thank tomorrow. you, John. Thanks, Scott. Puppy playtime, right? You bet. What time? I know, would you like 6 30, 7 quarter 7, something like that? That'll give them an hour. Start lighting 6 30? Yeah, for now. Okay, good. Yeah. We forgot to vote on the name of the movie. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All right, um, back to the treasurer update. Everybody's gotten Sandra's memo. I think her memo was very well done, very easy to read. Um, really, the only thing that we have to act on is the credit card. And we discussed it at length with the staff last week, was it, at the staff meeting? No, the week before. The week before. Um, and I think it makes sense for the town to have a credit card. For instance, I've used my credit card several times. One time it was like 400 and something dollars, and then I had to wait to get reimbursed. So this would take care of instances like that, that there's no other option. We're recommending a $5,000 limit. The card would have two signers, Judy and or Sandra. The cards would be kept in the vault. There would be two cards. Right, two cards. It'd be kept in the vault. Um, Five thousand dollar limit. That's enough. Yeah. For a town. That's enough for us for now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For what we're imagining using it. For. Right. So two cards kept in the vault. Right. Um, they have individuals' names on them, but that's says, of no consequence. Right. That's a, it's this town of Callis, and then the individual's name. Um, allowed uses, and we can work with Sandra, we can work with Sandra to come up with a policy. And then will they, like the statements be audited along with? Yes, the, like everything yeah. else, right. And really what will happen is, you know, we'll get the bill and it'll get paid, so we shouldn't ever accrue any interest. No, yeah. And then there's this rewards program, which we can think about how we might want to use it. We might want to say that we're going to use the rewards to buy something for the office, or we want to use the rewards to whatever. Thank you, gift cards. Or Thank you, gift cards. Things like that. Um, and there really is no application process other than Sandra calls Shelly Quinn up at the bank and says, Yes, the select board approved the card for $5,000 and all the other things that we discussed, and they issue the card, and there we are. That's another whole one. Orders. I don't know what I'm signing. I know, just papers. Um, this was on the one, on one of them or both the, of them. The yeah. papers together. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's because we didn't meet for a month, so we had yeah. two sets. Yeah. And I've reviewed every single one of them, every line item. And I had some questions because I got answered, which you probably saw the answers mm -hmm. to. So, is there a plan, Denise, to have a policy? I think we probably should. Yeah, because there's a lot of places that say we can, we can, we can, but right. if well, we I'm, don't... I can work with Sandra to come up with a policy. I'll have a, I'll draft a policy based on mm -hmm. our discussions and talk with the staff and mm -hmm. bring it back to the board to get approved. Well, we have a financial policy already, so maybe it could just be part of that? Yeah, we could probably we'll just make, make it an, a, an, an addendum appendix. or extra, you know, regarding a credit card. I had a question. Um, how this is going to work as far as um, when I pay for the renewal of the website every year because I'm using that cars. special contact thing. Oh, did I forget something? Thank you. Yeah, you just missed it. Um, so, so converting it over to the town. Yeah, yeah we, we can yeah. look into that. I thought about that exactly. Well, but same I. Thing. Um, but wasn't it? But set see, up? I have to log in. You know, I have to log in myself, and I guess I could just add mm -hmm. a new credit card. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that so way that the office can take over doing that, and you won't have to use yours, your personal card. Yeah, but I would still have to do the renewal. I would have to log in as that's myself. Right. I have to log right. in as myself because I'm the administrative contact. Right, that's right. Yep, you're right. So, I don't know. I'll figure it out. But yeah. it's coming up due pretty soon. When does it usually do in the fall? September. Yeah. yeah. For the 
Katie's um, Microsoft Office Thank you. license. It's an annual renewal. And I had to do the same thing with your the select board oh. uh, admin email account to access that. And then I use my own credit card, so it'd be the same thing. I'd have to use that login again yeah. and switch the credit card <coughs> file over yeah, to, to the right. credit card. Right. I mean, it's still going to come up probably you as the administrator, but it would have a different credit card, which we could do. Yeah, and I, I have to make sure it's not due September 1st. I think it's due September 30th. But I've been waiting because I knew that this was in the works. Right. So. Okay, remind me to get you the... Yeah. Number one. Yep. Okay. Unless it's due September first, which we may not have the card right in. Right. Which right. So if it's mm -hmm. September one, you'll unfortunately. Have yeah. To yeah. Do. Yeah. Okay. Um, the audits we expect to get. I forgot my notes from our staff meeting, but we expect to get the management letter on the FY seventeen audit um, any day now. By what is it? Friday, 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 Friday. Wrap up day for Friday, so Jordan's day that he'd like to have a draft management letter to me before that date. So we should have the management letter for FY17 to discuss at our September 10th meeting. And they're actively, they were coming in the office one day last week to do the final stuff that they get from the office for the FY18 audit, and then they go back to the office and, and do it all. Which I, from what Sandra has said, it seems to be going smoothly. Good. We'll probably get done on a few things, but you know what? I look at that as an opportunity to make things better. You know, if they come back with some items that we could do better on, that's, that's fine. Yeah. Awesome. Um, you'll note that the um, delinquent taxes are down to $69.69. Impressive. That's, that's a very impressive. And the money's rolling in from... This year's taxes, um, do we have a sense of, of like how long it's been since we've seen a number this low? And I can't remember a number this low in all the time I've been around. That's a long time, probably 20 years, 15 years maybe. Maybe 15 years since I've been paying attention to it. So that's pretty good. That's really good. Very good. Um, the office staff is looking, and Cliff can attest to this, the place is crazy some days. And they're running around with um, four different handsets to phones. All to one line. Say what? All connected to All one All connected line. to one line. So if they answer the phone, you can't like transfer it. Like if Judy answers the phone or Barbara, they can't transfer the call to Sandra, they have to run the phone over to Sandra to take the call, and it's crazy. So we're going to do some investigating. Cliff was going to check into like a real office phone system where you can transfer a call so that if the listers get a call and they're not here, they can transfer mm -hmm. it to their voicemail. Yeah, you know, just like a real office has. Yeah. And invariably, systems like that are something that's a significant enough cost that we would have to get it approved right we might not budgeted. be able to do it until after you know the next budget cycle but it's on the horizon interim because there are issues with noise level mm -hmm. in here uh, we've proposed looking at getting a um, noise canceling wireless headset that they can use with the phone mm -hmm. right and be able to maintain conversations mm -hmm. and focus Despite I have one room. that I got just a few months ago, and I absolutely love it. Really? Yeah. What make is it? It's a. It's it's uh, it's Bose, and I will I can okay. just look up which exactly which one I got. Yeah, yeah that'd be helpful. Bose is one of the best in terms of noise cancellation. Sound Touch right. too, something like that. But I'll look for I'll look for it and tell you what I have. That's great. I have Thank zero you. Zero regrets. Good. It wasn't cheap, but it, you know, I mean, the scheme of things. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. For their sanity it's some days. It. So worth it. And you know, we're also looking at maybe moving some things around so that maybe the listers are like mm -hmm. over there, or something like that, moving some stuff around inside. Instead of they're down there. Right, because they're down there, and if they're meeting with somebody, there's three listers, the people they're meeting with, the town office mm -hmm. staff right here. Um, so it gets, it gets a little chaotic and noisy and 
in Sandra, for instance, when she's trying to concentrate on figures, it makes it hard. So that's kind of what that's at. Um, Sandra sent us a budget update, but it's so new into the fiscal year. I mean, it's only about a month. Um, so anyways, I guess we need a motion to approve the credit card for the town. Um, I make a motion to approve the credit, credit card proposal with the understanding that we are going to put a policy in place to address, to address all of these points of discretion. Right, the ones uh, yes. as noted on by Sandra in her memo. Mm -hmm. Is that working? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay, I'll second that. Is there any further discussion or questions on the credit card issue? Right, hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Um, let's see, what else, what's next? We heard from John, um, the primary election that we had here in this little tiny space went very well, very smoothly. Um, there were four of us counting at the end of the night, and Sam and uh, Judy and Donna and Barbara doing the tabulator. Um, the, the absentee and early voting made a huge difference. And I forget for a primary, we had a pretty good turnout for a primary. So um, next election is in, what is it, November 6th, right? I think it's the 6th. Yeah, the first Tuesday in November? Yeah, so it's November 6th. And that'll probably be a little bit more busy, but it's gonna be here again because the town hall will be available. One um, other thing, if I could go back for a minute in Sandra's summary, she asked mm -hmm. for us to pick a date in September to meet with her to discuss the process for the budget. Yeah, yeah, I so saw that in her memo. memo. I, I thought we could just—I thought we would just schedule that. Okay. We can talk with with her at a staff meeting and put it on a agenda. We want to leave plenty of time to have that discussion with her. That work for everybody? He's a regular meeting. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Um, I guess we don't have the operations manager is not here to give us an update. Okay, how about we talk about the letter to Elizabeth Shed? I had I just drafted it like a, this little tiny letter because yeah. I don't know what to say because it's really the only thing that we have any say so over is her not parking her horses in the town right of way, not parking her wagon in the town right of way. We can say that, you know, it's not safe for everybody. But other than that, I don't know what more we can say. When, when you say right, I mean she's putting the horses in the road, right? The travel right. portion of the road is a difference, right? Right, they're grazing in the right of way and then they get into the road. Okay, because pretty much every farmer, including myself, grazes the right of way. We all do that. But she's, if she's tying her horses up or just letting them roam? That's no, no, okay. that's different. But okay. we just need to be clear that we don't want them in a, in a traveled portion portion of the right of way. Okay, that's because, like, you know, the big maple trees are to down, marching down the road, those are part of the right of way. So right. Wait people a minute, had my letter out. Fence, no, electric true. fence on those maple trees, they're grazing in the right of way. So we need to be consistent. So not grazing in the traveled. You can't graze. Well, it depends. The well, the horses say. cannot be located, cannot. They need to be fenced, fenced so that they don't end up in the traveled portion of the town. Fenced away, no free fenced range the, grazing. Fenced away. Right, well that's what they're doing is they're free range grazing. Right. <laughs> and so sometimes there's, there's literally in the right of fence. way. No, there's no fence. Most of the time she'll drop them off in various locations around town to graze. And it's, it's really dangerous. Something, yeah. Somebody, there's, God forbid, there's going to be an accident and Somebody's gonna hit one of those horses and the horse is gonna get killed or somebody's gonna get That horse hurt. will wind up in someone's lap. Right. I mean they're it's really, really tall bad. Animals. Like a moose. Yeah. Like a moose. Yeah, because mm -hmm. they're tall. And it's like you can't Wilson has tried many, many times along with Cliff to talk to her and it's just wow. So what so what is her response that she's doing her best? 
horse, what, you What's say. new? Is she new to town or is it new for her to have horses? I don't know why it's all of a sudden an issue. Does anybody? I don't know why. Mm -hmm. We never heard there. of it before. She's lived there a long time. Well, she's lived there a while. Yeah. Um, hmm. Uh, about approximately a year ago, she uh, decided she wanted to have this totally solar, off the grid, organic farm operation. She got rid of her car and she has been working the horses to train them to be her only mode of transportation for going into town to uh, obtain supplies. And she was initially going into Worcester, and now she's going into Montpelier. Right. So everybody. What did you, I'm sorry, I didn't catch it. She ran an organic farm somewhere. She's converting her property over to a solar-powered organic farm. I mean, you, she cut the trees she, down. Yeah, yeah, there's kind of that issue, but uh, she's growing mushrooms. <laughs> so. Yeah, because she doesn't want to cut the trees. She doesn't want to cut the trees. Right. She uh, does some holistic uh, healing uh, type work, and it, if you go to her, I guess it's a GoFundMe or something like that page, she kind of yeah. talks about it oh. in general. She um, wants to buy a draft horse. And yeah, one of the horses is um, not going to be a lot. capable of, of doing everything she needs, so she wants to get a, a draft horse now, and that's why she's got the GoFundMe page. I mean, I if there's a place where she could put the horses other than, is there a farm that? Neighbors have offered and put up a place where she could take her horses and let them graze. Oh, really? And she won't do it. Oh, my goodness, what an opportunity. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Okay. And so that's the problem, and thus, you know, that's when the, the wagon was in the road, and I get emails from people or calls from people seen the wagon. over various parts all over town where she's just like, She's in the woods, and the horses are just hanging around people's yards and in the road and stuff, grazing. That's scary. Mm -hmm. That's scary. I wouldn't want to. So not be ready for that. Come and they've been horses. found, and they've been out at night. So you know, it's bad. It's it's really a danger to the traveling public and the horses. So, anyways, we had. The, I mean, is there no, isn't there, we had an, an issue come up recently that was, that we kind of dealt with offline around keeping farm animals contained. These aren't considered, I don't think these are considered farm, farm animals. Um, we've checked with Jim yes, Wilson, Jim. and we have checked with Jim about it. There's really nothing. Horses are treated differently somehow. Right, I think, they they're more, I think they're more livestock, domestic kind of thing. And then remember we had, we talked about the pound keeper thing and that's really not a good option because then the town would then be responsible for impounding the horses and having a place for them to be, feeding them, having somebody take care of them. Um, so that's not a good option. Yeah, I had, I'd hate to see those horses at like your it's house. Worth, it's it's worth year. looking yeah. at the provision on the statute that we, that we had. Jim has. He, he has? Yeah, he said there's really no, huh. And we don't really have any authority other than the fact that, and she knows her right, and she's right. She knows she knows what she's talking about. She knows what her rights are. The, the law is, though, that, yes, she can have the horses, you know, on the road. They right. have to be under control. Under her control at all times. And that's where there may be something to address in this letter. Yeah. Like you said, you know, they have to be under control somehow, yeah. Yeah. whether it's tethered. Yeah, behind the fence line. Yeah. So anyway, that's kind of where we're at with this. And I'm working on a letter. I'm probably going to run it by Jim, just to make sure that we don't say anything we shouldn't. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good idea. So forth. Let's just make sure we always keep an eye toward this policy could be applied more broadly. Oh yeah. And so we need to be consistent. Well, we need to, yeah, so we need to, to understand be, if the full impact of the language is what, right. that's why I suggested that minor change, which is important. Yeah. So anyways, that's just an update, and every little while, like, I got an email from Wilson, I think it was yesterday, mm -hmm. it about the horse, and I think I put it, yeah, Katie put it in a folder. 
Yeah, the horse is in town. Yeah. Let me see that, John. She's been parking them in Montpelier. Yeah. Do you want any pretzels? Well, she's been walking, riding them down Main Street, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. And there's She's no supposed one. to ride to the side to allow traffic to pass. She wasn't doing that. Sandy Conti, the animal control person in East Montpelier, has dealt with her because she'll go like right down the road and won't get out of the way for cars. And oh. so it's just it's just a pain, unfortunately. And I don't think she realizes, you know, that we're not just trying to be. Does she go with a wagon? Sometimes down the road. We're not trying to be difficult well, about this, but just another clarification. I was just up in. Um, Towns at Island Pond, heading to Island Pond. There's Amish people up there. And mm -hmm. They drive their horses right down the road because that's their right. They do have that right. And they have lights and um, cars need to wait you know, for uh, mm -hmm. a safe opportunity to pass. They don't pull off. They're considered a, a vehicle like anything else, just not. That that's doesn't animal power. sound like what we're talking about here. That's why I asked if she's riding a wagon, then she can ride down the road. I think sometimes well, she has a wagon and sometimes she doesn't. I think her ultimate goal a, is to be able to go into Montpelier or wherever and get supplies. I haven't seen her on the county road. Somebody else told me that. I saw her on the yeah. county road. Really? Yeah. Um, With her wagon? No. Right now she is working on getting a wagon in order and a trained pair of horses to draw it. So she's working right now with the horses, training them to get used to cars and whatnot, with this ultimate goal of being to get this wagon fixed up. She's, um, she put a listing on front porch for him, asking if anybody had any bear fat available that she could render to do uh, axle grease for the wagon. Bear fat? Yeah, I used up all my bear fat last winter. I did too. Yeah, I did. But it is actually one of the best things you can use to make Excellent. Is that true? Yes. Is it? See, she knows, she, she knows what she's talking about. She's a smart lady. You know, I, I mean, wanting to have a, a green enterprise, a, um, a solar powered farm, as it were, these are, you know, nice goals to have. You just don't want to kill any bear and use your axles. I think there's probably better alternatives to doing that. <laughs> Well, so anyway, I just wanted you guys to see that I'm working on a letter. I'm going to get it ready. I'll so you know, Carl design. Hammer, this is kind of this mm -hmm. Carl Hammer ride drives. He's got a Teamster woman yep. who runs yeah, his wagon. He delivers eggs, eggs, eggs to the, the co-op co and compost and uses horses. Mm -hmm. Picks up the compost and the team. They're very donkeys, you know, but they're no, very controlled. Oh, yeah. Very, well, very well made. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's kind of cool. It's yeah, it's a cool. pleasure to, to see that. Get behind them, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not everybody is, is excited about, you know, you got to slow down. and mm -hmm. But that's, that's what you should, too. you know, I mean, yeah. this is Vermont, for heaven's sake. This is what we do. So anyway, so there's that. Um, and Cliff, are you ready to show everybody the... Can I ask a quick question on mm -hmm. Boris? So this is still true that you, haven't, you didn't have a chance to review these. Oh, no, I did. I signed them. So that no, it's just wrong. Right, I didn't take it off. Okay. okay. Remember, we had the issue come up, um, wondering about the public having access to the same documents that the select board has. So we talked about it. Um, Cliff actually has came up with a, came up with it. So here we go. Pretty cool. Basically, what we are able to do is create a um, subfolder in our select board drive, and we call it a oh, public. Okay. And in it, um, just like there are folders for the meetings, we mimic that structure with a little bit different naming um, type arrangement. We always press it in it with a PD to indicate you're working with a folder that is public documents. Mm -hmm. And what happens is when the uh, agenda is published and attached to the calendar, Katie is able to get a link to each of those documents and embed it into the agenda. 
so then whoever is looking at the agenda, a member of the public, they can click on this link and they access the public document folder that has all Michael. of these documents in there. He's good. Uh, Unbelievable. And when she composes the minutes and uh, sends us the uh, draft of the minutes, she'll publish it to the website. It will also have this link embedded into it so people can refer back to this document. All right. I think the draft minutes, um, it, they have to be public in for five, in five days. In five five days. days. But, and I, I'm bad about checking whether we have them within five days, but to me this changes the imperative that we all look at them before they become public. No, like we can, they can become we talk public. About we talk that. about them, they're just called unapproved. So they're already so we've already been doing published that and published on the website. Anyway. They are, yeah, yeah. doing that yeah. now. We haven't. Because okay. we feel it's the only way we can do it because we don't meet right. to approve them within five days. Right, yeah. Well, and un until it's a big problem. <laughs> right. Well, it's a lot. It's if you think about it, I mean, it would give people the ability to compare the final product, the approved minutes. They mm -hmm. can then right. link yeah. back to the original folder and see what it looked like before it was approved. Right. Yeah. That's good. It's more transparent. Maybe it's something for That's us right. to be. It is very transparent. I just, you know, I haven't seen it here. In other contexts, I've seen, you know, you want to make sure it's right before it's, but we haven't had that. Right, but, I mean, but it's, I don't know how we would If it's do marked that. draft, it's, right. it's, it's marked understood draft. that it, it, it may be totally wrong. Right, Yeah. it's marked draft. I mean, most of the time Katie's minutes are really good and they don't need much tweaking. It's what you've been doing, right? Cause right. They're on there like the next day. You're right, you're right. It's, yeah. I've, I'm worried about something that hasn't been a problem yeah. here. So, and even if it is a problem, we still have to make them available within five days. Yeah. Right, even if they're wrong. Even if they're wrong. Yeah. Yep. Public or we record. don't like the way it was framed. Or mm -hmm. yeah. Yep. Okay. And then you make the changes and approve them if right. need be. And the only thing that might be different is right now I take down the unapproved minutes. As soon as you approve them, I put the approved ones replacing. I don't leave up the unapproved ones for right. people to compare. Right. But you're website. right, because now if this folder remains available indefinitely, there's always the opportunity to pull the unapproved ones, which you haven't offered before. Right, but I can I could see us though taking the unapproved yeah. ones out of the folder. Yeah. yeah. Okay. When when the final right. ones are done and put out because we don't want people Right. We can say stick them like so we can we better. can archive right. them right. somewhere if people really about. want to look you at. You could you could uh, also you could mimic what you do in the select board and just like you would replace the unapproved with the approved, you could do the same thing in the front of the folder. Yeah. Will, will yeah. the link remain available with all the documents in it, or do, are you going to take down? Well, that was one of the questions. Um, Theoretically, the link lives we, as long as it's. Right. I don't know why we take it down. Just the minutes. Okay. Yeah. 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 And I think given the way, I imagine doing what we do in the select board folder of moving these into an archive folder after a period of time. And unlike when you were dealing with Microsoft, you move a document into a new location, the shortcut no longer works. For Google Drive, it would still function. Mm -hmm. And somebody might want to look at the old documents. Right. So are they? So while they're out in that public, mm -hmm. um, I think that's where I went, and they and I couldn't make edits. That's right. Mm -hmm. No, because they're in read only. Okay. But so, I would think we wouldn't want to make edits in the public document. We want to do it in a select board folder. Well, the thing about it, well. If we did them in the public document, because we get we have this problem that you and I have talked about before that if we're all making edits, yeah, then it's a meeting, and That's right. if we're all doing that publicly, then we're having a public meeting, and it could be more efficient. Okay, thank you. <laughs> it's okay. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. No, I know. Oops. I guess I know. These, the primary driver behind this was that in the course of our meetings, we're pulling up documents that we're reviewing. Right. And it's not really the minutes that we're reviewing. The idea with the minutes is that we've all reviewed those, made our edits, and then it's just it's a matter of saying, yes. okay, 
time to approve this. Mm -hmm. But the bulk of the documents are <clears throat> things like this email that Denise asked Katie, hey, could you put this email from Jim into that folder and whatnot. So they're documents that aren't being edited. If you look at the list. Yep. No, you're right. I, what I'm thinking was when we were working on a policy. We had a couple of policies we were, we were working on and we hit that. And then I and I and then I went to the VLC training with the conservative interpretation that we shouldn't all be right. Editing. And that's I think that's different than the minutes. It it is different than the minutes. The right. minutes are different by definition. Yeah. Um, but we've also said I think that we don't perceive that we really we really have a problem in how we've managed our editing policies. I mean, I think so we're, far. I think we're doing our darndest to be as transparent as we possibly can and provide people with information. Right. Um, I mean, to speak to that point, maybe it helps if we think of it this way. We, we say, okay, I just did a draft of a policy and I pushed it into the folder. Katie, will you make it available in the public as well? And then we meet and we review that draft and we say, well, we need to make some changes right. and we make those changes. Chances are somebody gets a sign, hey, you know, let's go clean this up and bring it back to the next meeting. Yeah, that's well, now it yeah. carries over into the next folder, and we say, "Okay, right. Katie, can you but pick this not next all, edition?" Where we went into right. problems is that's not uh, that's not exactly how it always goes. Mm -hmm. Well, I think we're trying to be better about that, so that we're not making edits, maybe at off meeting. And uh, there's I mean, no reason just, we couldn't. Perfect. There's no reason yeah. we couldn't. I mean, do it that we, way either. We if we decide, policy. hey, this is important, we need this to be completely transparent mm -hmm. as we develop this policy, let's maintain it in the public document and do our edits in the public document if we decide it's important enough an issue. Or acknowledge a process that might be different and be transparent about our process mm -hmm. that is yeah. going to be efficient and thoughtful and... Mm -hmm. So are we trying to come up with a solution to something that's not a problem yet? or? Do you want to be thinking about it or what? what I just want to be aware of it. Um, well, that's why I asked the question. Can we make changes publicly? The answer is no. So. I mean, I can extend I don't think we edit want, but, but I don't think we want it so that the public we don't want any edits to our. No, 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 you, no, we don't. No, no, you're right. I agree with that completely. Oh, okay. I was just one. No, 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 no. But but it's all or nothing is what I'm hearing. It's like if the document's out there, there's not a way that we can all be making edits. We could, well, we we could set the folder up that way so that everybody on the select board, just like you have the ability to edit documents within the select board folder, we could grant you edit. So, all right, that's folder. good to know if the time comes that we want to do that. No. That only we can make those edits. Right. And the way I the set it up folder. is with the and idea that... And then they're public. Exactly. And the way I set it up is with the idea that... It's available to the public as a read-only document. Right. The only other editing that's going on there is adding or deleting folders from it. Mm -hmm. And if we decide at some point we need to change that, it's very easy to do it. And that could be a case-by-case -case basis, mm -hmm. right? It's document by document. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's been maybe like a year since we worked on a policy that right. was that big a deal. That big a deal, right. Yeah. Okay. Is everybody good with this? Yep. Thank you, Cliff. That was a really great. Um, and then, so I guess, well, well to believe the point, one more thing is now we have to be extra careful about what is in there. It goes well, without saying, but that's one of the things that we stumbled on when we first started this. Is and we have a plan that if it's a document that's like something that we would go into executive session for, mm -hmm. which would be personnel, mm -hmm. legal matters, those kinds of things. Confidential mm -hmm. folder. Confi well, we, I will tell Katie that it's not a public document. Okay. And it would stay, stay in the select board agenda folder mm -hmm. but not be public. And Katie is the only code. one who can put something in the public folder. Should we have no. a code no. on that? Can. Like we have I PD, can, like Denise CD. can, and Katie can. Mm -hmm. okay. Once again, we can change those. The public documents are encoded with a PD. PD. Maybe mm -hmm. confidential should be CD. We should have a code on those. Well, that's what Katie was discussing with Denise and I before the meeting started. Didn't 
Denise will send a document to her and say, this is not for public consumption, just put it in the select board folder. She's going to come up with a naming convention, okay. doing something exactly like what you talked about. Yeah. She puts a hyphen and a CD yeah. after, SBO after, something like that. So it clearly identifies. And you're, and you're like, Katie, you're also, I'm She's, sure you're looking at it and saying, mm -hmm. yeah. that doesn't seem right. Right. No, I, I mean, I want her to double check and ask questions. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And sometimes she does. Yeah. It's not clear. Well, what do you you want? Both these documents in here, or just this one? Mm -hmm. So, well, I think we have a pretty good system in place. Yep. Okay. If something doesn't look right, I want you to say so. I might. We might think about like when there's an email string, because sometimes the email needs to go in for content. Right. And that's mm -hmm. when I sometimes mm -hmm. tell you to put the email in. Right. And if the whole email is going in, maybe I'll just look to see if it seems like there's anything at the bottom auxiliary or something. Right. Something. Right. Something, right. something, right. something you might not want out there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, that's good. Okay. Because Gmail sometimes can get really. It's weird. Weird, and you can like because it collapses and you right. Know. And you can, right. Then sometimes you can forward a message, but it doesn't forward the whole thing. And sometimes you mm -hmm. can forward just one message, and it's like sometimes I can't tell when somebody's responded. Right. To a Gmail. I don't like the string thing they did. They're all done. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 All right, um, John, you want to give us an update on CVRPC? Well, just briefly, um, I spoke with Denise a little bit about this on the phone. Um, so, in addition to my monthly duties as your representative, the town's representative to the regional, Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission, I'm on a uh, subcommittee, the Clean Water Advisory Subcommittee. I'm also on the fac Facilities Committee that looks at you know, the perm, you know, facilities that are infrastructure that's in a, in, engaged in some process. It could be at the Public Utility Commission. It could be, a, you know, at, I don't know, Act 250. Um, usually it's stuff like that. It has a regional significance. But this Clean Water Advisory Committee, CWAC, PAM, that's the acronym. Uh, Pam D'Andrea is the staff person, our, res our neighbor. Mm -hmm. Uh, the staff person, uh, uh, the per CDRPC uh, person who staffs it, and, uh, and then Karen Bates is a representative from the state, and so each main, main watershed in the state is, the, the state is, uh, the agency of natural resources is developing a plan for monitoring and, you know, managing and, and limiting, uh, you know, pollutants from going in there. Um, and strategies are, are going to be part of this plan and implementation schedules and all that. So the process is a good process. They, so for each uh, watershed, you know, um, there, there are regions, it is a region or more than one region that is, has an interest in that watershed and its protection and, and, and growth within that watershed and how to limit the impact of growth and, you know, roads are stormwater permits are one issue area um, and as part of this conversation I, I it came became readily evident to me that the only contaminants of concern by the state agency of natural resources um, are sediment and nutrient phosphorus and nitrogen that's it They're not looking at anything else and um, so I, I raised a concern a few meetings back that I, I, that this plan is kind of myopic. It, it doesn't. It's not as broad as it needs to be. If we're trying to protect the rivers and Lake Champlain, is where our Winooski River flows to, um, from all possible insults, it's not just nutrient that's a problem, right? Nutrients are causing these. They call them algal blooms or cyanobacteria blooms. But, um, and that's what's bothering people because they see it. Is that the but, stuff in Lake Champlain? Yeah. Right? And, you know, originally the, the theory 10 years ago, 15 years ago was, well, just don't let your dog eat it. But it's okay. It's not a, it's not a risk otherwise. And now they're saying it's, it's a risk in, in very low concentrations if you ingest it. And, the, and I just, and now I'm reading that volatilization or it's, it, it atomizes from getting splash in the air and the breathing of it. So, John, for, so, for example, what is something else? Uh, pesticides, herbicides. Okay. Yes. Yeah, things so, that aren't really things. 
that's what you're saying. Like 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 sediment is a thing. That well, takes and nutrients. Well, they're all things, but they're just no, no, no. But I, yeah, no, I asked right. Well, yeah, asking for yeah. You. Sediment. So is what a else should be on the list? But so so the conversation got pretty deep into the need for the analyticals to be uh, to include pesticide runoff uh, in addition to nutrient runoff. Um, so Karen Bates is going to check back with the folks back at A and R about you know whether that that's something A and R would support. I mean, it suddenly also dawned on me this is not our plan. We're assisting A and R in its in its development of right. its plan. So we have a chance to make it better. Yeah, and and you know that it's it's responsive to our concerns. But um, so Karen is, seems to be you know working here for us, and she's. And there, she's going to reach out to Ag. Uh, Pam DeAndre is also reaching out to a retired employee from Ag who's used to actually monitor and measure for these kinds of things. So, well, that's good. Um, so, and in the longer view, in terms of Callus, I met with um, the Conservation Commission last week um, on Thursday uh, because I got this idea that we might want to. We don't. There are no cornfields in Cowles, except for, and so I don't see a direct in, impact from pesticide runoff to Cowles, but we have lawns and stuff. Um, but my concern is that we, we might want to get some benchmark numbers, analyticals, on important water bodies in our town, so that if, if and when these pesticides make their way here, however, that we have some background data to know that, well, there's a change here and what, mm -hmm. what may be causing the change. Um, there's also a water body that's shared by Callus and East Montpelier, and that sees a lot of ag activity. Which one? Sodom yeah, Pond. Uh, Cornfields uh, ringing the East yeah, Montpelier North side North of it. Um, so, that's, those cornfields are in East Montpelier. Mm -hmm. Sodom Pond is mm -hmm. half in Calor. No, we're talking about North Montpelier Pond. Yeah, it's got both. It's, it's, it's definitely got both. But there's no corn there. Right. Yeah. Not so, yet. but there may be some, yeah, who knows. So, um, so I, I, I talked about, I talked to the Conservation Commission looking for it, the, looking to see if that was something they thought was a good idea, mm -hmm. and they seemed interested. Um, so uh, over the winter, I want to develop kind of a strategy for what water bodies we should be looking at mm -hmm. and what sand type of analyticals we should perform. Can we I, do some testing? Yeah, and, and so, and then I would have to put together what they call a sampling plan. Mm -hmm. and it's got to be done a certain way so it's above challenge, if there is a challenge. Yeah. If we do find something that's bad, that's when it's going to hit the fan, and every, every effort will be made to debunk it. So mm -hmm. um, I got to do everything right according to the EPA protocol. So, um, so I'd like to work on that over the winter, That'd be great. and then bring it to you all in the spring. And by then, I should have more information in terms of maybe the state ag lab will fund mm -hmm. the the you know the analyzing of the samples. We want to have maybe have two. Maybe have Two another, sets. yeah, have uh, duplicates done at an independent lab, see how it goes. But mm -hmm. so that's like six months off anyway. Okay. Um, but I just wanted to kind of get that on your radar. Interesting. Okay. Very, thank Interesting. you. Yeah, yeah, thank you very much. So, I mean, it just, you know, if you guys are, you know, the, the pesticides they use around here on the cornfields. Yeah, they're not. Yeah, you know, they're marketed as being innocuous and biodegradable. Well, that's know. what they say about and everything say, until it's not. They say gasoline is biodegradable, too. You know, but they water. say that about all these things. And yeah. They say it's there's no harm, there's no no harm, and then 15, 25 years later, yeah. it is. Well, and Cheerios is like loaded with glyphosate right now, thousand parts per billion oh my God. concentration, the and, and the health advisory is like I don't know under a hundred, and they're in a thousand range. And so the you know the FDA and the EPA are supposed to like say, well, you can't sell that, but in this. This isn't just Trump. It's happened to Obama. They're just looking the other way. Yeah. Because it's ubiquitous and nobody wants it. And this is our this is a new threat, folks. Yeah. When the stuff is so widespread, these agencies say, well, it's everywhere, there's nothing we can do, so get used to it. It's happening with that those Teflon derivatives. It's ubiquitous. So they're saying, Oh well, 
we can't deal with it, it's just everywhere, so we'll just keep adding to it. Yeah. It's it's a real problem. Um, so. Yeah. All little pieces of plastic that are... Yeah, and then the little pieces of plastic, it's in salt now. Mm -hmm. It's in salt, it's in shampoo, all kinds of... Yeah. 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 So, and, they're, and they're concerned. There's, there's the, the plastic that they can they can see with, I don't know, they use an electron microscope, but then it gets so small. What, what do they call those little tiny nanoparticles? They're, they're, they're concerned that there are yet smaller particles that this plastic, you know, plastic, this stuff. And they put that right in here. shampoo? Well, yeah, they use nanoparticles in shampoo. And face scrubs, you know, the that face scrubs, sense. they yeah. used to use sand oh, and silica. Those, that those? Now they use plastic beads and you wash it down the sink and it breaks down. Is that that down. stuff they put in the hand sanitizer stuff? Too? Yeah, yeah, and those little beads that you yeah. can see. Yeah. Yeah. And this is wonderful. I love polypropylene. You know, it's the, the miracle. 20 years ago was these PET plastic water bottles. Mm -hmm. They're great. You can recycle them and you make ski gear. You know, ski jackets and mm -hmm. the insulation, Thinsulate, and this. Yeah, and there's and, always. And then when you wash something. it, all the little particles go down the drain. They yep. go in the sewage plant, they're in our streams, they're finding yep. it in fish tissue, they're finding it in our tissue. Um, they're saying it's even in the air that in France it's. It's it's one? raining down, and they've done measurements. It, it's, it's, it there are tons of plastics oh, raining out of the atmosphere in France, and it's worse here than there. And they think it's from the clothes dryers. Oh, Did you see in 60 Minutes how that, that, man, that man won that lawsuit oh, against Monsanto? Yes. So it's being looked at, I know. So anyway, so I wanted to get that on your radar. Well, thank you for doing that, John. That's yeah, sure. awesome. Really, really and awesome they're also there are also health risks. All these things. Yes. I mean, yeah, this, is, this is about the getting in the water, but unbelievable. Yeah. All right, um, EMF. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, John. It's kind of depressing. So we we can all. We can all rest assured that John's going to take care well, of it. I was thinking we're all going well, to Well, I'll give you the data so you can see how but we're, things but are. We're There's not. no cure for this that I can see. All we can do is try to do our part. we can do is try to do our part. Yeah. Okay, EMFD. What do you want to do? Um, East Montpelier Select Board would like to continue to do. I've got to go back and reread the emails because I read it one time and I think they want to do quarterly, and then I read it another time and they're okay not to. The problem happened when I forgot that there was a meeting so I didn't notify all of you because I thought it was in August and it was in July or whatever it was. Well you found out after the fact. Right but I should have had it written down as I was told by the fire department and Toby. They didn't send out any reminder. They, they, they sent out. No. They did. They, they well no they said I made the mistake because no, no, I didn't no, write it down. The because it was in July and it wasn't supposed to be. Anyways, whatever Whenever the we issue better, is, we need a better system. We need a better system. Rose is going to draft a letter saying that we realize that we missed this meeting, and we got kind of sh um, chastised because there's not always like, especially East Montpelier. We usually have the best turnout. East Montpelier, a lot of times, it's just Bruce. Mm -hmm. But what they don't realize is that when you're on the select board or whatever, you probably have a job. You probably have other things that you have to do. You probably have a family. And they're feeling like we are not committed. And what was the word they used? Who is um, they? Who is the they? The fire department? Fire department. Because they missed one meeting? No, because we don't have a good turnout at the meetings of select board members. I thought we always have I thought we do. Members. We always do. We do. We do, but East they don't. Clear doesn't. Oh. They, they, they say that it's just they being the fire department say, I'm trying to be careful what I'm saying. Um, that it's disrespectful that more select board members don't show up. But it's up to East Montpelier. If they want to send Bruce and have Bruce right. report back, that's not up to us. That's not right. up to us. It's not up to the, the, fire, the, fire, problem is, yeah, yeah. Not up to the fire department the either. Right. That's their issue. But Bruce can't make, he can just take notes and bring right. stuff back. He's not a decision yeah. maker. So right. it's but we don't generally that. make decisions at fire department meetings anyway. Right. Well, we advise but when Bruce, our decisions. Yeah. When Bruce was the chair of the East Montpelier Select Board, he made the blanket statement that these are advisory and informational only and right. no action will be taken 
And so he already kind of, if you will, dumbed it down one level, like it's not an authentic joint select board meeting right. where things can happen. I and always, so we always we left it, but it is a real meeting, and right. we call it to order, right. and we adjourn it, and, and we I have an agenda, quorum, and, and we have an agenda, but on their point, so oftentimes it's just Bruce who's the town right. administrator. We, but we actually have made decisions at those meetings. Yeah, yeah very, very far and few between, well, but an occasional new fire truck thing. Yeah, was. yeah, yeah. yeah. But so that's why they. Anyways, it's it's just kind of the. It's still the same atmosphere, I'm afraid to say, as it always has been with the fire department. That you know they don't really like having to give us information, have us approve budgets. They would like to be able to just do what they want. And they're, they are responsible, they do a great job. They do. <clears throat> they're all volunteers pretty much, except for now we have the EMT stuff, but they, they are not great communicators, let's put it that way. So are you saying that they actually don't want to continue the quarterly meetings? They would like to have three a year. I think it's helpful to have the one in October because that's when we're ramping up to do right. our budget that's for right. the town that's report. Right. And I think if I'm not, I'll double check with Bruce, but I would encourage us to still do, we have the October, so October, November, and then we have December and skip the January one because that's when we're hot and heavy into budgets. We should have all the figures from them. That and and they check, they, they meet with us on the budget stuff at our select board meetings. Usually, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, they come in because we got to right. approve. Mm -hmm. Right. We vote here on that. So, so I'll chat with Bruce, but I think that we should we should um, not side, but what's the right word? We should support. agree with support. East Montpelier Select Board and their thoughts about how often we should meet because it, it is important. It's a lot yeah. of money that we yeah. put into that fire department. Yeah. Well, and can I can I also say though that. Um, I, this is how I feel about it. I I don't know how many of those guys live in East Montpelier. We don't, I don't live in East Montpelier, none of us do. I don't know them, and so I wonder if we have a different informal relationship with the. I think we kind of do. It's fire. always kind of been that way. Informal. Well, in that they, they tend to. They all live in East Montpelier. Historically. Right? No, it's no, Callis and East Montpelier. No, it's Callis and East Montpelier. Yeah. Okay. And. Okay, if so we that's have a formal it. relationship because we have an MOU, we have contracts. No, 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 I'm not saying it's not formal. I'm but saying the a need to check stronger in. Stronger friendship the, lines. The need to check in maybe the East Montpelier Select Board, if it's true even that. No, they're actually sometimes more insistent on information and asking questions than even we are. Okay, yeah. so in any case, I think that it's. Don Wells was a big. That's true. From my person. perspective, it's. Yeah. it's, it's it's in. It's a critical resource for the town. It is. a lot of money on it, yep. and it's important for us to have those check-ins. If it communication is. is this bad when we're not, when we are doing it, right? Then obviously we need to just keep working at it. Right, and I would like to change that culture with them. That it's not about checking up on them, and we always say how much we appreciate what they do. Rose and I, every meeting we have, both of us say something. And it's like, yeah. and it's it's unfortunate because we're not. I mean, it's a lot of money, mm -hmm. and it's not their money; it's the town's money, the taxpayers' money. I think money. the problem is when you have a volunteer organization, it's it's difficult to be managed by someone outside who doesn't contribute their fair share of volunteer effort. And <coughs> so that's always a struggle. You see it happen with the food co-ops too. You know. Yeah. Well, and you were on the Woodbury Fire Department, so you know how long well, time ago. Right. So it, it, it's tough, and I want us to have a good relationship with the three entities because mm -hmm. it's really, really important. Yeah. And we've been, I think we've been very supportive. I think one of the things that happened was that whole Plainfield thing that yeah. really turned things bottom side up, and the select boards didn't like it and, and mm -hmm. so said so. Anyways, and then, you know, there's just a whole lot of history there that just keep being nice, communicating, showing up for meetings, and I, like I said, I usually do an agenda because I never know for sure if we're going to have a quorum. When so. is the next one? Do we even know? Um, October, you said? It's the third Thursday. But, you know, panning way back, checks and balances, whenever you see checks and balances yeah. gotten rid of, 
because people don't like no, to I be don't. checked yeah. and balanced. But it's good. Yeah. And and every time they get rid of it, that's when this. I'm the same. Yeah. This, I'm talking way big. I'm talking federal government. State right, right. That's when the problems erupt. Yeah. Yeah. And then they put them back it's in, and people are like, oh, I guess we have to. And then they kind of forget. They lose that history. No, wait. And so it's a necessary thing, and it's also a necessary component, I guess, for I mean, people, for there to be friction. Right. That's what checks and balances does. It pisses everyone off. Well, and and, and anyway, we have to be used to that. We have to anticipate right. that. And so I thought this this. But you know, that's healthy. Right, just like an audit for the yeah. town, and we yeah. get done on stuff, yeah. but we can make it better. It's an mm -hmm. opportunity. Mm -hmm. it's, yeah, it does. Nobody likes it, but it's an opportunity yep. to make things better. Um, Thursday, okay, it's the second Thursday in April. I think it's the second third. Thursday in August, and then the first Thursday in December, mm -hmm. and then is it the third or the second Thursday in October? I thought all of these meetings were the third Thursday. Now, if you look at the emails from the way to them up. So, what did he say? Maybe it's just one. Starting in 2019. Oh shift to three meetings a year. And and we're saying, I think East Montpelier is saying, no, we still want to have the one in October. Uh, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so I got to double check with Bruce. I, th I personally think having the one in October is important. Yeah. yeah. It's a critical one. Yeah. That in December. Yeah. Yeah. Because that's when we're all doing budgets. Yeah. Um, so anyways, I'll check into it further and I'll send out a note just telling you when the meetings are so you can put it on your calendars. Cause I'm sorry, I forgot about the one in well, July. I mean, I was the administrative assistant for six years, and I'm the one who sent gonna, those reminders. And you're going to do up a nice little letter. Uh, you don't do that anymore. No, no. no, no, no therefore, it doesn't get done. Right. Yeah. But so they have a new person. Another good person. Back. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Oh, right. So we yeah. thought we'd send a nice little letter thanking them for their blah, 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 blah. And would you please ask your administrative assistant to remind the chairs of the various select boards, blah, blah, blah. Just a nice little note so that we, they know that we're paying attention. Yep. So, all right. They should, it's not a slight on them. For it's, it's not. This is a necessary not. function of government. There right. are public monies involved. And so I know they know that. It's just, it's, it's just, just the pain. Their jobs are stressed out. They got, they work right. regular they jobs. Do. and They work regular. They, they work full-time jobs too, so. Um, Don't blame them. No, I just, we just we keep all trying have to, to be work put up with it. That's all. Right. Okay. <clears throat> Ooh, getting close to nine o'clock, folks. Not everybody's keeping track. All right. So we did. Don't forget um, BCA meeting Wednesday night, Wednesday seven o'clock here. Uh, it's um, not. It's not at six. It's seven. Yep. Okay. Okay. You Richard. saw the. You saw the. <laughs> Uh, I knew it was email. coming up. I didn't mm -hmm. put it on my calendar. And it's Golly. here. It's here. And that is a quorum Fuck. of the select board, a quorum it's of the JPs and the town clerk. The listers present <laughs> evidence, and I'll get into this further Wednesday night, but just so you know. The listers will prevent evidence first, then the appellant, then the listers can re re rebuttal it. Rebut. Rebut it. And then... <laughs> We have a mandatory site visit that we'll have to schedule for a different day. Then we close the hearing. I'm practicing on you guys for Wednesday night. Then we close the hearing, and we can deliberate, and then we issue a decision. So okay. we are the decision-making body? We are. It's quasi-judicial. Okay. And they are the, the appellant and the defendant? Right. Right. Um, you saw the issue about... Someone target shooting mm. and stuff at the yeah. at the Moscow Woods transfer station. Shooting yeah. downhill, huh? Scary. Very scary. Smart. So I I um, notified Sam Hill, the sheriff. Mm -hmm. So maybe they can do a drive by or something. Do they? I, I think they, yeah, they work on Sundays, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, have them drive by there. Actually, I drove by there Sunday morning and saw that car, and I'm looking to see if he was dumping trash. And there wasn't, and didn't see anything, but it was must have been before he was target shooting. Oh, and that, so that jogs my failing memory. Um, are we still waiting to hear back from the school board? Yeah, I was thinking about that today to see what they were supposed to discuss it at their meeting. Yeah. Um, and I don't know the if they ever did. Wonder. I'll check in with them. It'd be great to get that done. I, I really think what we need to do is 
grass that in and make a nice little picnic ground. And yeah. Well, I thought, you know, we could put up signage. Anymore. Make it nice and... We could put up signage for now about private property and, you know, put up no hunting or shooting signs or whatever there is. But somebody like that, he's, they're not going to pay attention to signs. Yeah. Or a front porch. Well, it may be a one-off. It may be a one-off thing. Somebody's sighting in their gun for hunting season. Now right. they're done. Right, maybe. Probably so an odd place to do it. Right. Well, they probably thought it was a safe place. Who yeah. knows? But we're sure they sh they're aiming to town, not into the hillside. Right. right. Usually, you do that. That's why you, right. you be there. Um, okay, RB Tech. I happened to see something on the news where some furniture store in Colchester, Wendell's yeah. Furniture, Wendell's. got attacked by ransomware. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when we were meeting last Wednesday with the staff, I asked about, mm -hmm. are, are we protected from ransomware? And Sandra talked to RB Tech, and the answer is yes and no. Yep. It changes so much, the ransom people, whatever yeah, programs they well, use. Yeah. And the staff just needs to be very diligent about not opening, not responding to emails that look at all suspicious. All of us do. Yeah, I don't I mean, at home. I don't open stuff if I don't notice. But we all have, we all share a Google folder folders and right. Yep. So, anyways, there is some security in place that RB Tech does for ransomware. But you know, the caveat is, it can still come through if you're not careful. Right. If it looks suspicious, delete it. Right. And then apologize if that was the wrong thing to do. Right. Um, we talked about the new phone system. Um, we got this, this ransomware. We got this thing from the Vermont Community, Vermont Council on Rural Development. And it's a Vermont Community Leadership Summit to nominate someone from your town to attend for free. Um, and they send it to Judy and I. And it's in the Google folder. And I think that. I interpreted it to be they're looking for up-and-coming people in towns that are future leaders. And I was actually, I don't know, John, if you had a chance to look at that because you had some concerns. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm distracted here. The Paul Costello Community Leadership. Oh, yeah. Um, it's an opportunity for future leaders to kind of get their wings out there. And so I was looking to see about us nominating somebody for that summit. Summit, they would get in for free at Castleton University. Local leadership for the future of Vermont communities. And we all know volunteerism of younger people is pretty low. Mm -hmm. So I was wondering about a, um, nominating someone from Callis. And I had somebody in mind. And Judy had the same person in mind, uh, Jamie Morby. Mm. <laughs> That's who cool. when you talked about this he popped, that he popped she, in the yeah. head. Um <laughs> she's very active in like the town mm -hmm. stuff at the garden, Maple Corner Community Center, you know. Yep, she makes things happen. And I and she's I think she's an up and coming leader when we're all in our rocking chairs. So um would you because it says for the select board to nominate somebody. So, anybody have any comments, questions, concerns about this? I think it's a great idea. Okay. Yeah, I'd be in favor of nominating Jamie. Okay. So, I'll make a motion that we nominate Jamie to attend this conference. Is there a second? Second. Okay. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All right. All right. Last thing on the agenda. Remember when we were talking about invasive species? Five times and a year. Five times a year we talked about cutting, it. Cutting five times a year. Um, yes. And Peter Harvey came and said he wanted to do an experiment on Old West Church Road, and we said, okay. He said he'd put up signs and he'd talk to all the neighbors. Well, apparently he didn't get a chance to talk to all the neighbors because I had a call, emails, from a neighbor who I explained the reason for not mowing and, and, and about the invasives, and they seemed to get it about the invasives, but not totally buy into it. So I asked Peter to go back and talk to them again, because he didn't talk to them the first time. Apparently he showed up, they weren't home. Long story short, these 
residents are still concerned about the fact that their roadside was not mowed. There's, I guess, big patches of burdocks, site distances that aren't good because of the of the weeds and all that stuff. So I'm not. I'm just putting this out here because I don't know what to do about it. Well, it could be mowed now. I mean, we were supposed to have two mowings. Right, but the signs were still up. Yeah. So it didn't get mowed the second time because they've already done this second time. Mm -hmm. So I'm not exactly sure what to do about this now, and it's well, it should the, the be the town doing this. It was an experiment this year, and it's, and you know the, the the issue with parking, on um, limited parking, and now if the if it's not mowed, then it makes it even harder for people to park on Old West Church Road, and that's often where people park when there's events like Fall Foliage Festival. So I don't know what to do about it at this point. Unless we ask Doug to go back and mow it now, he's going to charge us if we say go back. I don't know where Peter is at with the work that he's doing on the road, so I'm trying to. I go do it, but Mike Bushog's out of commission. Does Peter have any ability to mow it? Well, that's what I was going to ask Peter. I mean, this no, was kind of his idea. He was he's getting he's got a something. Lawnmower. No, he's getting he's getting something, but probably not in time to mow no. right now. So I'm not exactly sure so what to do when the town doesn't have anything to Relatedly, um, I still think you know, we had the idea of possibly hiring a high school kid. Right, be, buying a tractor or and, a mower. And I, I really think we should give some thought this winter and, and during budget time to putting money aside. We spent hundreds of thousands of dollars on truck. we, trucks. We can buy a $15,000, $20,000 tractor and mower used. Right, it doesn't have to be new. And run a kid around. Mo. Mm -hmm. No, I think I thought we were going to talk about it this yeah. budget season. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But in the meantime, what do we do about this situation? How, how, what do we think Doug might charge? Because I don't know, and I don't know what the invasive time is over so that it could be mowed now. Is it over? Well, everything's got in the seed. So if he's just mowing that, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we're gonna. And now we're spreading, I mean, now we're now we're spread it around. Now yeah, we're going to spread the around, seed, right. right? Well, now what you're supposed to do is cut the seed heads now, and like. Well, the idea was not. Not to spread the seed. Well, Peter, the areas that were no mow areas were areas where Peter pulled the plants. Right, but you can't just pick and choose. Sure. I, well, I asked about what well, could. It was only a test. Right. It was and not I, I explained all that. Yeah. And. The thing is, is Doug can't just like, oh, there's a burdock bush, mow that, mm -hmm. pull the blade up. You know, yes, I mean, no, I know. you right. can't right. just yeah. do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And these people were very, very nice yeah. about it and yeah. thanked me for all my service to the town. Yeah. Very mm -hmm. nice about it. So, but, they're, um, not, but yeah. they're clearly not happy about it. Yeah. And I don't know that Peter has any ability to do anything about it now. Like, is it going to take his lawnmower down the side of the road? I don't know. Well, even then, it's. I, I think that we're going to have to get a quote from Doug to come back around. Yeah, and, I think so. I mean, we're, because, we're yeah. I mean, it's you, it's that arm, you know, that yeah. reaches. So, right. Yeah, sure. You know, it doesn't ruin the yeah, lawnmower. Yeah. It's well, and we're we've said this before around invasives. We're just we're trying to figure it out, mm -hmm. and we're trying to do the right. And they, thing. right, and they were very appreciative of that, and do the right thing. And so, you know, they were upset, kind of that. They we didn't did. have, they weren't in on the discussion, but it was on, we've talked about invasives, I think at least two different select board meetings. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and Peter came to us with an idea. Mm -hmm. and, and, we, and we bought in and we said, okay, give it a try. It's, a pro, it's an experiment. Mm -hmm. And that's a learning process. Right. Now, you know, we'll, we'll, we've had an experience where the, some of the people weren't notified or didn't necessarily mm -hmm. agree. So it's next only time. One, one entity, right? One so family. far. Yeah. Yeah. But then we didn't think it through that, okay, if this section isn't mowed, what's and, gonna happen? And what's gonna happen? Right. Like, yes, you can pull the invasives, but who's gonna mow the lawn? You know, we didn't think that part all the way through. Right. So. And I do yeah. like the idea of buying our own equipment, and then you, then you could do it five times a year. Right. And you could yeah. say, we're not gonna ro mow this road right now because it's at this stage. Right. But we can send the guy out there you know, three and, weeks from and now. or we can continually mow it so it never gets to the seed stage. Yeah. That's right. that was my hope. Yeah. yeah. Right. That it, we would it would actually look it would improve. So that once and then it grows right back up again. Right. Um, 
that, I mean, the, my understanding is roadside mowing was really to prevent woody brush from coming in. Mm -hmm. You hit it once a right. year. It's not really right. a, for sight distance stuff because it comes back. We don't. We used to right. only do once a year. We did. Now we're doing and, it twice. You know, we mow it. If you got mowed in May, it's mm -hmm. that and it's twice high. twice for the invasives. Right. Mm -hmm. And right. what we learn is twice isn't enough. Right. No, what we right. learn is really you should do it like five times. Exactly. Yeah. That's where I was right. saying. Five right. Times. So yeah. if we had our own mower. Right. Then we could do it when we, we, we wanted do to. It. And when the guy's not, we could have a person just running around. Mm -hmm. Well, I wasn't the idea that the, those signs would come down for the second cut or no? That's not what we were thinking. I'd have to, I gotta go back and look at it those. It doesn't minutes. matter because whatever, it didn't happen. Right. And I tried to call Doug when they were out there mowing, but I never could get a hold of him because guess what? He was out mowing. Mm -hmm. Well, we also, it doesn't have to be Doug. We could look for other, or, mm -hmm. I mean, right? I mean, a lot so, of people have a brush hog that's I not see, very busy right now. There's somebody else out there because I, I went by the Woodbury Town Garage mm -hmm. like in July and they had this brand spanking new, beautiful, you know, $60,000 John Deere tractor with a sidearm mower. I'm like, whoa. Is it theirs? Well, they used to always mow their own roadside. There, there was a time they did. Um, and I said, wow, they, I wonder if that's there or if it's just being parked at their garage mm -hmm. because someone's doing it for them. And then I'd swear I saw the same identical tractor inside our mower parked at East Montpelier, um, the, the old fire department hmm. there. So well, I can check with I'm one wondering, one I'm wondering if uh, it's a it's another a contractor. contractor. Well, yeah, because maybe that person, maybe not if Doug's not available. Busy. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll check in with those yeah. two entities and get back to these folks that we're trying to figure something out that we appreciate. Well, thank you for alerting us. Yep. Just saying that. And I think, oh, we need to approve minutes. And Sharon and I both had made a few changes, but as always, Katie did a fabulous job. I move that job. we approve this whole slate of minutes as proposed, with the edits proposed. With the edits proposed by Sharon and Denise. And Denise that were in our right. in drive Google folder. folder. Google folder. Okay, all those. In, so there a second. I'll second. And the all minutes those. are what dates? It was the it was meeting with the school board. Mm -hmm. School board, the July 9th meeting, July 23rd. Yep. So did I miss that meeting with the school board? If you no. don't remember it, you did. No, you were here. No. You don't remember? It was here. That, that's right. right. I it was here. Dinner. Yeah, it was here. Yeah, here. You were here. Okay. It's okay. I got the I same remember syndrome. Denise. Okay. I remember There's no cure. <laughs> Death. Yeah. I'm thinking, did I go to the school for a meeting? Yes. No, no, I know. But I'm waiting for these guys to get done talking so we can vote. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Um, one last thing, and somebody put this here for me to share with you guys. Um, the New Hampshire Charitable Foundation, called Up to the Promise, sent a check for $1,000. Deposit of the enclosed grant check signifies your acceptance and intent to comply with the terms of this award. It also serves as our request. Okay, this, is, this grant is for the Callis Trails Fund in honor of Reed Charrington, the first chair of the Callis Trails Committee. The funds may be used to create an endowment, trail rights, construct trails, or any other trail purpose approved by the town. So Reed I don't, or Debbie? It says it's Reed. It's not Reed because he was the first chair. Right. That's what I thought at first, Coincidental, too. actually. Right, actually, I thought the same thing, but no, it's not. Um, so if they're looking for somebody to sign this grant, are you guys okay with me signing it if we... Absolutely. Just we get track and report and do lots of work. Expenditure of grant funds. It's probably all, all they're always wanting to know how you spent it on. But nothing. Or we could have it in endowment. We right. could just deposit it for... This came in. Right? SP will need to motion to approve under new business. Terms do not appear. Erroneous looks good to me, Sandra. Okay. So. Oh, nice. All right. So we got to send Reed a copy of that. Yes, and we'll make sure that happens on Wednesday. So the, the select board will need to mo motion to approve this as new business under new under the new business section on our agenda. Yes. Is there? A Can motion? we do that tonight? 
because it's a money thing and it no, we're receiving uh, we're, we're receiving we're receiving we're okay. not spending so moved. is there a second second all those in favor please say aye aye, aye. aye. all right and is there anything else under new business or old business no. thank you for this also it was great oh you're welcome get the spot the news mm, the neighbor issue Oh, I was going to bring that up, yes. Yeah. There's a um, neighbor dispute issue. I talked to Greg at length. He must have not been home because he talked forever. Yeah, I wasn't home. Um, there's a neighbor dispute on Lightning Ridge Road. It involves, should we, I guess we should say the names, Tim Siever, Ben Reed, and Rolf Mueller to some degree. And Greg is involved as the fire warden because if I, get, I can make sure I get this right, Rose, because Ben Reed has this huge pile of, I guess they call it slash, which is like a burn, a burn pile. Yeah, brush. And he's got it as kind of a barricade on his, set back from his property line to barricade against Tim Seaver, who every chance he gets blasts music really, really loud directly at Ben Reed's house. Why? It's just it's a neighbor, neighbor dispute. Neighbor dispute. Um, Tim Seaver is also the fellow that likes to fly the drones, the drones. Mm -hmm. and people don't like it, and that's part of the neighbor issue because that's what I don't he's like it. Done, mm -hmm. and he's been droning me. Um, anyway, so this is just a, to update you. Yeah. Ben Reed probably will never burn this pile, but if he does, he can burn it in the winter when there's snow on the ground and there's Fire absolutely order. nothing we can do. Greg's the fire warden. He's also oh, that's checked. a concern that he's going to light it up. Right. Yeah. But if that's he were to, concern if he was he wasn't lighting it up. If, yeah. it, it's both. So Tim Seaver. <laughs> Tim Seaver put up a plastic fence, like a snow fence. Like a snow fence, and he's worried that if Ben Reed sets the pile on fire, it's going to melt his fence. Then he has to replace the fence. Right. So I'm just saying. I'm, I'm just. This is really just to let you guys right. know what's going on. We really have no involvement. Right. Yeah. Um, and Julie Lenny sent an email today, and right. she asked Greg to make a formal, determination, a formal determination. Put it, she wants him to put it in, in writing, writing that he that really yeah. the fire warden doesn't have anything to do with. Yeah. If he burns it in the wintertime, and there's snow on the ground, there's a statute. Yeah, yeah. you don't need a burn you don't permit. need a burn permit yeah. if there's snow on the ground. And Greg's been out there and checked out the pile yeah. to make sure that there aren't things in there that aren't supposed to be. Right. Because when you yeah. do say you're going to burn stuff and there's snow on the ground, it has That's to true. only be certain things. That's true. Yeah, but he and he's been no out there painted inspecting. lumber, no tires. No, it's for right. clearing the land yeah. where yeah. he's putting yeah. in these houses. So and Ben there, Reed but. does have a a disabled daughter. Mm -hmm. yes. That's the other building he's talking about. Mm -hmm. Joseph's daughter. Right. Yeah. So you know it probably is really obnoxious to her. Just not a good it's just like you know these neighbors just why can't they just get along yeah. you know if you don't like each other fine but don't like so, but the, putting your understanding the, the music isn't just he plays music loud it's, he's, oh no it's, no, it's, 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 it's yeah, deliberate every time, yeah every is time Ben starts an there? excavator to do work that's when the music comes on and Rolf has complained to me about the blaring music now meanwhile the speakers are facing Ben Reed and Rolf lives on this side and it's blowing so and Rolf just says it's can you hear it at your house music. I can't hear anything, so oh. no, I don't. I don't hear it. But, but anyways, I just so you know what's going so on in town. It's a neighbor dispute. So in case you get any calls mm -hmm. or somebody says something, you know what's going on. It's not a huge shock. But really, we have nothing to do with it at this point. Yeah, it's a Seriously. neighbor dispute. So just and if I guess so if it gets out of hand, they call somebody the moving in there. Huh? Right? No, he doesn't. He doesn't own the property. So. Yeah. And that's why it says Reed Wood Road. Mm -hmm. yeah. He'll probably construe the wood as wood. Well, that's wood, what I thought. That's lumber what I thought. wood, not yeah. a name wood. So. Right. Well, that's what I thought when I heard it. I thought, oh, must yeah. be about talking but about But he went to the state. He went to the state instead of Tim Seaver did. Instead of just taught, you know, leaving it at Greg's level, he went like to the state, state and police. the state told him, no, the fire forest fire, yeah, oh, okay. fire warden people, and they. They told them this is this is a, a local issue with mm -hmm. your fire mm -hmm. warden. Right. So, so they, yeah, backed up, they backed up Greg basically. Yeah, which yeah. Is what Greg they did do. a site visit on Thursday and we got pictures and it really it's it's like between some saplings and it's just it's a huge it's like a berm, but it really 
it does lessen the sound. Yeah. You yeah. Know, and he doesn't well, really have any intention of burning. Well, I think that's yeah. what his intention is. You can do that better it. for the planet. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. And He's for wildlife. Just, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 So. All right. Anything else? Nope. All right. Glad Next. I don't have neighbors. Okay. Don't forget it's Wednesday night. <laughs> tomorrow morning is the road erosion thing at the town garage. God, it was, um, it was quasi next, it was just next filled right up. Next board meeting is September 10th. And when's, this Wednesday night we have the meeting. BCA. Yeah, BCA. And bring your calendars because we're going to have to schedule a site visit. <laughs> is there an agenda posted for the BCA meeting? Yep, yeah, it's on the website. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Motion to adjourn. We probably should. Oh, yeah. yeah let's do it. Oh. Go ahead. No, you go no, ahead. No, no, no. It's, it's going to be, doesn't have to be a part of the meeting. I'll second that motion. All right. All those in favor, aye. Aye.